Call on the flagship station for the New York Yankees. WABC New York. The Magic Numbers games are all over. Every race has been decided. But here in Toronto, two numbers games continue. The Blue Jays try to win 100 for the season, and Phil Necro tries to win 300 for his career. New York Yankees baseball is sponsored by Anheuser-Busch, makers of Budweiser, Bud Light, and L.A. Beers. Texaco, makers of Texaco Super Unleaded that helps knock out the knocks. Nissan, builders of technologically advanced cars and trucks for over 50 years. Manufacturers Hanover, the financial source worldwide. And by your Tri-State Chevrolet dealers, we've got what you're looking for. Getty, at Getty, the proof is at the pump. People Express Airlines, the smart way to fly. And by the New York Yankees. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for New York Yankees baseball on radio. From Toronto, Ontario, Canada, this afternoon, the New York Yankees play the Toronto Blue Jays in what will be the final game of the season for the New York Yankees and for the Blue Jays, a lead-in game to the American League Championship playoffs. The Blue Jays won the Eastern Division title yesterday. All the division races have been decided. I'm Frank Messer. With me, John Gordon, Phil Rosito, and Bill White. It's a blustery, chilly day here in Toronto. Overcast skies. The lights are on at Exhibition Stadium. And I'll be back with the starting lineups for this afternoon's game between the Yankees and the Blue Jays in just a moment. Do you think station wagons are old-fashioned? Well, wait till you see what happened to that big, clunky wagon when the engineers at Nissan got through with it. Presenting the 1986 Nissan Stanza Wagon. The first wagon with sliding doors on both sides. No center post or pillars between you and its 80 cubic feet of cargo space. And Stanza Seat 7 with optional jump seats. The all-new Stanza Wagon. More than just wonderfully roomy, more than a fresh, modern design. This beauty's powered by a two-liter fuel-injected engine. So it's right at home on busy highways, merging into traffic or climbing hills. It took Nissan Innovation to give you this combination. Performance in a wagon with two sliding doors. See the new Stanza Wagon at your Nissan Datsun dealer. The name is Nissan. For years, America has ridden on Monroe Matic shocks as their favorite, and now there's a new favorite on the way. It's the Monroe Gasmatic, a gas-charged shock. At Car Parts Incorporated on Staten Island, buy three Gasmatics and get the fourth for free. Better ride, affordable price. Car Parts is located at 150 Canal Street on Staten Island. Open Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 6, and Saturday, 9 to 5. Car Parts Incorporated, the oldest automotive store on Staten Island. Every major league team has at least one all-star, but our team has over 8,000. We're the New York State Association of Life Underwriters, the all-stars who can do it all for you. For expert life insurance and financial planning, for IRAs, KEOs, pension and retirement plans, make sure you deal with a member of the New York State Association of Life Underwriters. There are 35 local chapters around the state. When you need an expert, go to a professional in your community. The all-star to have on your team. This program is authorized by the New York Yankees solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the descriptions and or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Yankees is prohibited. And now let's check the starting lineup for the New York Yankees. Ricky Henderson will lead off and play center field. Don Mattingly will be at first base and bat second. Dave Winfield in right field will hit third. Don Baylor is the designated hitter and will bat cleanup. Batting fifth and playing third base, Andre Robertson. At second base, Woody Randolph. Batting seventh and playing left field, Henry Cotto. Catching and batting eighth, Butch Weiniger. And playing shortstop for the New York Yankees and batting ninth, Bobby Meacham. On the mound, Phil Necro, 15 wins, 12 losses, and Necro will be in his fifth start to try to win his 300th career game. And now for the Toronto Blue Jays, Domaso Garcia will be at second base and lead off. Playing left field, batting second, Rick Leach. 
In right field, hitting third, Lewis Thornton. Playing first base and batting cleanup, Cecil Fielder. Batting fifth as the designated hitter, Jeff Burrows. At third base for Toronto and batting sixth, Kelly Gruber. Playing center field and batting seventh, Ron Shepard. Catching and hitting eighth, Jeff Heron. And batting ninth and playing shortstop, Manny Lee. On the hill for the Blue Jays, a left-hander, John Ceruti, making his first Major League start and fourth Major League appearance. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Exhibition Stadium in Toronto, the Greater Fort Erie Combined Choir to sing our national anthems. Yankees and the Toronto Blue Jays after these messages. For St. John's fan Robert Cole, whose car's pickup was more dribble than drive, there's Gulf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts to help him make all the right moves. For Stephen Spies of Queens, who lost his hair long ago, but who still isn't as bald as his tires, Gulf dealers have Cruise Master tires made to last 45,000 miles to keep his driving worry-free. Gulf, everything we do makes driving better for you. For Robert West of the Upper East Side, who lives in the fast lane, but whose car has a habit of dying there, we offer Gulf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts to help his car pass in style. Gulf, everything we do makes driving better for you. Your Tri-State Chevy dealers got the big idea on small cars, like the new Sprint that delivers a big 55 miles per gallon, the best in America. Or new Spectrum with a big comfortable interior and great mileage. Or go for the Nova and get big time performance in America's new roomy subcompact. Hey, when it comes to small cars, your Tri-State Chevy dealers got the big ideas and small base sticker prices to back them up. Now more than ever, your Tri-State Chevrolet dealers got what you're looking for. Well, the home plate meeting is taking place as Don Mattingly brings the Yankee lineup card to home plate. Third base coach Jimmy Williams represents the Toronto Blue Jays. The umpires for this afternoon's ball game, Larry McCoy at home plate, Steve Palermo at first base, 
Dave Phillips at second base, and Jerry Newdecker is at third base. We take a look at the pitchers this afternoon. For the Toronto Blue Jays, John Cerruti making his first Major League start. He has pitched uh, two and two-thirds innings in relief for the Toronto Blue Jays after spending the season with Syracuse of the International League. He has a record of no wins and one loss. Cerruti was the Blue Jays' second first-round choice in the first round of the June 1981 free agent draft. He was the 21st player selected that year. He was drafted out of Amherst College, where he had a career mark of 29 wins and five losses. Now for the New York Yankees, Phil Negro takes his fifth shot at winning career game number 300 this afternoon. Negro works to become the 18th pitcher to reach that coveted 300-win plateau. This will be career start number 658 for Phil Negro. He has lost three of his last four starts. As mentioned, a very chilly day here in Toronto. In fact, this is the coldest uh, weather of the series. At game time, it will be approximately 50 degrees Fahrenheit as we watch Cerruti, the left-hander, make his warm-up tosses. The Yankees disappointed yesterday after the ball game. Naturally, they had come into Toronto hoping to win three in a row from the Blue Jays and prolong the 1985 season through tomorrow. But today, as the Yankee players and as we look back on the 1985 season, I think all of us realize that this ball club has come a lot further than most people thought it would. Many experts at the start of the year picked the Yankees to finish no higher than fourth in the American League East. The Yankees, with a tremendous season after, say, the first two or three weeks when they were playing hurt and playing without their three top regulars, Ricky Henderson, Don Mattingly, and Dave Winfield, have come on to post a very, very fine season. You win 96 games and a possibility of the 97th this afternoon, nobody can say that was a bad year. John Gordon uh, is uh, with me as we start the ball game this afternoon. And John, uh, that is the feeling I got from the ball players themselves. Disappointment yesterday, certainly. But today they look back and realize that they have done a heck of a job. I think so, Frank. And uh, you mentioned on the Yankees Magazine show this afternoon when we did a little bit of a seasoned analysis of the year that when you win 96 ball games and you go to the very next to last day of a season and still in the pennant race and an opportunity to win you really can't be that ashamed of the year that you've had. I think the biggest thing is the fact that the Yankees did what they did this year and nobody really expected them to do it. I think now everybody is really anticipating and very optimistic about the 1986 season simply because there are really telltale signs of improvement for next year. The fact that Pally Rulo played as well as he did and Pasqua came on to help the team a little bit this season and then the veterans Mattingly and Winfield, the years they've had, my goodness, it's really something to look forward to for 86. So. Yes, this is the last game. It doesn't mean anything, but uh, it does for Phil Necro. The Yanks are really looking forward to 86. All right, here we go. Okay. Here's John with a play-by-play. -play. Thank you, Frank. Ricky Henderson leads it off, and the first batter takes a ball low, and it's one ball and no strikes from John Cerruti. A no-win, one-loss record for Cerruti, and they pitch to Ricky. is down low and inside. It'll be two balls and no strikes. As mentioned, Cerruti spent... Uh, the balance of the year at Syracuse in the International League. The uh, left-hander, 6'2", 195 from Albany, New York. And uh, he is 25 years of age. He pitches a strike and it'll be two balls and one strike to count. Ricky is hitting at 316. 24 home runs and 72 RBIs. He scored 146 runs on the year. And that, of course, is league leading. Swing and a foul back in. Cerruti is even on the count of two balls and two strikes. We're just underway on a chilly Sunday here in Toronto as the Yanks and the Blue Jays play the final game of the year. I'm firing crew today, Larry McCoy calling the balls and strikes. Jerry Newdecker at third base, Dave Phillips at second base, and Steve Palermo at first base. Phil Necro continues to take his warm-up tosses down in the Yankee bullpen. And Henderson batting with a count of two balls and two strikes. The left-hander ready, he works to the line and pitches, and a foul back, and it's still two and two. Henderson with the 146 runs, uh, unless he scores three runs today, will not make the leaderboard in runs scored in the all-time Yankee list. The number 10 total is uh, 149, held jointly by Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth. 
1927 and 1931. A curve misses inside. And a full count of three and two to Ricky Henderson. When you look at the run scored leaderboard for the Yankees, and in the top ten, there are 11 spots listed. Henderson swings and hits a high fly to deep left field. The wind will hold it up. And Re Leach is waiting. He's got it, and there's one down. Well, Ricky Henderson, who set an American League record this year with most leadoff home runs, seven. It's a fly ball to deep left field, but there to catch it was Rick Leach. Of the 11 names listed in the run scored leaderboard for the Yankees in their history, there are just three players, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Joe DiMaggio. So Ricky Henderson uh, almost joined an elite group, and he may if he scores three runs today. That shows you the kind of season that Ricky Henderson has had for the Yankees. And they pitched a Mattingly down low. One ball and no strikes. Don batting at 320 on the season. 34 homers and 144 RBIs. This at bat for Mattingly is his 648th of the year. Takes a strike in the outside corner. One ball and one strike. And Don has made the leaderboard in the at bats column for the previous Yankee years. Swing and a bounding ball. Foul past Cecil Fielder at the first base line. And it'll be one ball and two strikes. Mattingly should end up with, uh, oh, maybe 650 at-bats. And if he does, it'll put him in the number seven spot behind Frank Crescetti, who had 656 in 1939. He'll wind up leading the league and runs about it in. Total bases, second in base hits. First in doubles, unless Buckner hits three this afternoon for Boston. Second year in a row that he'll lead the league in doubles. Here's the pitch to Mattingly. He strokes one down the left field line. It is a foul ball into the seats. And one ball and two strikes. He'll wind up third in the league in hitting. He cannot go higher. He cannot go lower. He'll wind up uh, second in the league in uh, slugging percentage. He'll lead the league in extra base hits. He'll lead the league in game-winning runs batted in. Pitch is wide and a 2-2 count now to Don Mattingly. Well, I do believe that Don Mattingly and George Brenner are going to have a real horse race for the MVP honors, and I think Mattingly has the edge at this moment. Here's a bouncing ball to first, and it takes a bad hop off the dirt part of the infield and into right field. Mattingly will reach with a leadoff single. Well, Cecil Fielder was ready to play that one. It was a very routine ball, and it hit right off the edge of the carpet and the dirt portion of the first base area and hopped into right field. Mattingly is on with a leadoff single. Don's second hit of the series, now two for ten. One out single. Excuse me. One out single. The leadoff batter, Henderson, was the first out. Here's Winfield. Dave batting at 277. He had 26 homers, or has 26 homers, and 114 RBIs. That was base hit number 208 for Don Mattingly. Wade Boggs will start the afternoon with 237 and will lead the lead. And the pitch to Winfield is down low and inside. Gets away from catcher Jeff Heron, and on to second base goes Mattingly. We'll wait for a scoring ruling to see if it's a wild pitch or a pass ball. And Mattingly has advanced to second base. That hit for Mattingly is 208. Ties him on the all-time Yankee hit list with Lou Gehrig with 208 back in 1932. Wild pitch. Charged to John Cerruti to advance the base runner Mattingly. He's at second. And stepping in is Winfield at a count of one ball and no strikes. Yanks have their regular lineup in the batting order this afternoon. Here's the pitch to Winfield. A swing and a miss. And it'll be one ball and one strike. Understandably, Bobby Cox, the Toronto manager, is playing uh, his irregulars, to use that word this afternoon, resting his regulars for the American League Championship Series against the Kansas City Royals. The only everyday player in the lineup is Domaso Garcia. Here's the set now by Cerruti and the pitch to Winfield. A tapper right back to the pitcher. Cerruti's got it. He holds Manningly at second base and throws out Winfield at first. Two down in the Yankee first, and the batter will be Don Baylor. As disappointed as uh, Billy Martin and the Yankees were yesterday in losing to Toronto and dropping out of title contention, the Yankees were very excited today about trying to win the game for Phil Necro and hoping that Nuxi will be the 18th 300 game winner in the history of the game. They're looking forward to the game today, wanting to win for Nuxi. And Baylor takes a pitch down low, and it'll be one ball and no strikes. Should be the kind of breeze that uh, 
Negro likes. It'll be blowing over his right shoulder from left to right. And a pretty strong breeze, although not as stiff as yesterday or night before last. Two down, one on, and no score in the game, and a low fastball, and it'll be two balls and no strikes to count to Don Baylor. Baylor with a 233 batting average, 23 homers, 91 RBIs. He is two for six in the series, playing in both games. Yanks won the opening game of the series on Friday night, four to three, and were beaten yesterday, five to one. Win for the Yankees today would be their 97th of the season, and they would finish the year 97 and 64. Here's the set and the 2-0 delivery to Don Baylor. Down low and in, almost hit Baylor. And it'll be three balls and no strikes. Baylor has been hit 24 times this year, tying an American League record for being hit by a pitch most times in a season. Here's the set by Cerruti, the 3-0 delivery now to Don Baylor. He takes the ball low and draws the walk. On to first goes Baylor, and the batter will be Andre Robertson. So Mattingly at second base, Baylor at first base, and Andre stepping in. Hitting at 333, 41 for 123 for Robertson. He missed uh, over half of the season. Out with a knee injury suffered in spring training. Playing at third base today and batting in the number five spot in the Yankee batting order. Here's the pitch to Andre. Down low and in. And it'll be one ball and no strikes. Rudy having problems staying ahead of the hitters. He just walked Baylor on four pitches and now drops behind Robertson at 1-0. and oh. Gray, overcast day here in Toronto. We haven't seen a whole lot of sunshine in this weekend series here. Robertson swings. Bounding ball up the middle. Nice play by Garcia and a backhand. Throw to first. Safe will be Robertson as the ball was low and in the dirt and Cecil Fielder could not dig it out. Mattingly is still at third base. Baylor advances to second and Robertson is safe at first. We'll wait for a scoring ruling. I believe it'll be an error charged to Garcia on the throw. It was a tough play. He had to back end the ball behind the bag. He threw it on one hop in the dirt, and the first baseman, Cecil Fielder, tried to backhand it out of the dirt, and it will be a throwing error charge to the second baseman. So Garcia is charged with the air. The bases are loaded for the Yankees. Mattingly at third base. Baylor at second base, and Robertson at first base. And the batter is Willie Randolph, batting with the bases loaded. And two down here in the top half of the first inning. We're just underway. No score in the game. A strike, a fastball is across, and a Cerruti works ahead of Willie Randolph at no balls and one strike. Willie hitting a 276, five homers, and 39 RBIs. Everybody at a base for the Yankees, and here's the Cerruti pitch. Randolph swings and hits a chopper down the third baseline. It is a foul ball. Pitcher Cerruti over to cover, and the ball in foul territory. It'll be a two-strike count now to Willie Renda. Before the ball game, John, I was talking briefly with Effie Guerrero, a Toronto Blue Jays scout from the Dominican Republic. He has sent three players to this ball club, George Bell, Johnny Fernandez, and Manny Lee. Lee at shortstop today. All three men from San Pedro de Macorís, a town in the Dominican Republic that has sent just literally... <laughs> dozens of ball players to the major leagues. Quite a chat with Epi and uh, I learned something about uh, the people in that uh, city. I'll pass along. And here's the pitch to Willie. It uh, hit him or the bat. We'll wait and see. Randolph is on his way to first base and he has been hit by a pitch. Randolph is a bit upset about uh, Cerruti hitting him on the 0-2 delivery. Plate umpire Larry McCoy jumped out in front, make sure assuring that there was no problem between pitcher and batter. And a run scores. Mattingly comes across as Randolph is hit by a pitch. RBI for Willie. And Mattingly is in with the first run of the game, and the Yanks lead by a one to nothing count. Heavy Guerrero said there was quite a celebration uh, down in uh, the Dominican when they learned the Blue Jays had uh, won the American League Eastern Division yesterday. He said that his country is about equally divided between Toronto fans and Dodger fans. Here's a pitch to Henry Cotto, a swing and a miss, and it is no balls and one strike. He said, should the two teams meet in the World Series, it would be uh, 
quite a collision course down in uh, the Dominican Republic with the fans equally divided. A pitch high and wide, and it is one ball and one strike to Henry Cotto. He's the seventh man to come to the plate, plate for the Yankees here in the first inning. Cotto is hitting a 288, no homers and two RBIs. Limited action for Henry. 15 hits in 52 at bats. A curve is high and two and one in the count. Now the Yanks uh, jumping out in front, one to nothing in the top half of the first. Randolph hit by a pitch with the bases loaded and Mattingly coming across to score. Baylor is at third now. Robertson at second and Randolph at first. And Cerruti working from the set position. He checks the runners and delivers and misses inside. He's three and one now to Henry Cotto. Well, let's see what uh, Henry does with a hitter's pitch here. Three balls and one strike. And Baylor getting the lead at third base. Robertson a couple of steps off at second. Ran off the same at first. Here's a bounding ball and a base hit to left. They're going to wave Henderson, or, um, Robertson home. He's going to try to score. There'll be a play on him, and he's safe. And two runs score on a Henry Cotto single, and the Yanks jump out three to nothing here in the top half of the first inning. Andre Robertson in a very close play at the plate, coming in safe, and a good slide as Aaron tried to put the tag on him. Well, John, not just that he has uh, driven in two runs with a base hit here, but I think Cotto may figure rather heavily in the Yankee plans for next year. Game over from the Cubs in uh, the trade over the winter, and uh, Henry has showed us he can play the outfield. He has some speed. He has a very, very strong arm. And if he proves he can hit some, I think he'll be high in Yankee plans for 1986. Here's Butch Weiniger, the eighth man to bat in the inning. The Yanks leading three to nothing. Randolph at second and Cotto at first. And the first pitch to Butch is low for ball. One ball and no strikes. So the young 25-year-old left-hander, John Cerruti, struggling here in the first inning. And a 1-0 pitch to Weiniger gets away from catcher Jeff Heron. And on to third goes Randolph. To second goes Cotto. It'll be the second wild pitch of the inning. And the Toronto fans, who uh, were quite excited when the Blue Jays took the field, giving the Eastern Division champions a standing ovation, are a little bit upset about the first inning pitching of John Cerruti here, who's having trouble settling down. Well, he's really wild out there. He's thrown two wild pitches. He's hit a batter. He has walked a man. He could be out of the inning on uh, Robertson's bouncer to the second baseman Garcia, except for the throwing arm. So the runners move up to second and third. Randolph, the lead runner, third. And Cotto behind at second. And here's the 2-0 delivery, a fastball for a strike. And it's in there, two and one to count to Weiniger. Butch hitting a 225, five homers, 32 RBIs. Three to nothing, Yankees lead. Two down, two on. And here's the 2-1 to Weiniger. It's high, three and one to count. Cerruti got his baptism of fire in the major leagues against the Chicago White Sox with the bases loaded one out. He was set in the ball game by Bobby Cox and he struck out Al Baines. Quite a way to start your major league career. Here's the 3-1 delivery. Weiniger swings and fouls a fastball back and out of play and 3-2 and the count. Bobby Meacham, the number nine man in the Yankee batting order, is due up next. Another sellout crowd here today at Exhibition Stadium. It appears the crowd this afternoon will be much the same as the crowd yesterday, which was uh, just over 44,000. Cerruti is ready to work now. Three and two to Butch Weiniger. Two down, two on, and the pitch. It's high, ball full. And the ninth man to come to the plate for the Yankees will be Bobby Meacham. Nobody active in the Toronto bullpen. The second walk given up by Cerruti. Yankees have two hits in the inning. A single by Cotto. It was a two-run single by Henry. And a bad hop base hit by Don Mattingly. Here's Meacham now. Bobby will bat right-handed against the left-hander Cerruti. Hitting 220 on the season with a home run and 47 RBI. Here's the line now, and the pitch to Meacham. A curve is on the inside corner for a strike. No balls and one strike to count. And now they will get Jim Acker, a right-hander, up in the Toronto Blue Jay bullpen. Here's the line, and the 0-1 delivery down low to Meacham. 
And a count will be a ball and a strike. Cerrone led the Syracuse club this year in games started 27. He led them in innings, 182. Strikeouts, 110. He checks the runners. Everybody's at a base for the Yanks. And a low breaking pitch gets away from catcher Heron. But he quickly tracks it down. And the runners hold. Randolph at third. Cotto at second. And Weiniger at first. 2-1 to count to Bobby Meacham. Well, the Yanks trying to provide a nice cushion for Phil Necro to get things started here. They already have three runs in the top half of the first inning. Necro is no longer throwing down in the bullpen. He has the option of getting up again if he wants to as the inning continues. 2-1 delivery. Meacham swings and hits a high fly to center field. Center fielder Shepard is back and makes the grab, and the inning is over. The Yankees bat nine in the top half of the first. They come up with three runs on two hits. There's one error in the inning. A couple of wild pitches and a hit batter, and three are left on. At the end of a half inning of play, the Yankees three and the Blue Jays coming to bat. If you think all realtors are alike, listen to an expert talk about Realty World. Every couple of years, my husband gets transferred, we pull up stakes. So we're trying to sell the old house after making a commitment on the new one. Believe me, you never want to get stuck with two mortgages. That's why we work with Realty World. At Realty World, we know it takes more than a classified ad and a for sale sign to get the job done. That's why we've developed an exclusive step-by-step -step action plan for selling your home. They'll pull it through every step of the way. Their track record with us bears that up. From listing your home to showing it to completion of sale, Realty World will come through for you. This won't be our last house. Maybe we should keep the sign, save them the trouble. We've helped more than a million people buy and sell homes, and we can do it for you. We're Realty World, the results people. There are more than 60 Realty World offices in the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Let the professionals at Realty World show you how to get results. It's Sears Auto Centers. Come into Sears Auto Centers for super savings and service you can count on. Now through October 13th, save on Sears heavy-duty RT shock absorbers. Radial tuned and temperature compensated for a smooth ride on radial and other tires for most cars. Now only $8.49 each while quantities last. For super savings and great service, come into Sears Auto Centers. Where we install confidence day and night. There's more for your life at Sears. Available at most metro area stores. New York's Yankee Station, Talk Radio, WABC. Let's take a 10 second Lon Jean's watch timeout on the New York Yankee Radio Network. Have you seen the exciting gold medal from Lon Jean's, the world's most honored watch? See it at Philippus Jewelers in Mount Kisco and Ossining, New York. When you want to talk sports, call Art Russ Jr. every weeknight at 6, right here on Sports Talk. WABC, New York. Phil Necro now with a 3 nothing lead. We'll pitch to Damaso Garcia, Rick Leach, and Lou Thornton here in the bottom half of the first inning, John. All right, next he facing Garcia. Garcia is the only batter in the lineup for the Jays that has an at-bat in the series. He is uh, two for ten, and he takes a knuckleball for his strike, balls and one strength to count. Ron Shepard played uh, briefly in this series on Friday night as a pinch runner, but he did not bat. A knuckleball, it is wide, and it'll be one and one in the count. Weiniger's catching today, Robertson at third, Meacham at short, Randolph at second, and Mattingly at first. In left, Cotto in center, Henderson, and in right, Winfield. Necro one and one to Damaso Garcia, and here is a hard knuckleball hit high in the air to left center. Henderson looking at Cotto, Cotto looking at Henderson, and Ricky saying, I'll take it. He's got it for the out, and there's one away. First man struck out by Necro in the ball game will put Phil in seventh place on the all-time strikeout list. He's right now in a tie for seventh with Ferguson Jenkins. Nuxie has uh, two starts against the Blue Jays this year and one decision. He was the losing pitcher in the Friday night, September 13th game at Yankee Stadium. 3-2, the Jays won that game. Lifetime, he's one and two against the Blue Jays. He pitches a ball wide to Rick Leach, and it's one ball, no strikes. A fastball is hit on the ground, foul. And Robertson will play it at the third base coaching box, and one and one to count. 
Leach is 7 for 32 this year and hitting 219. No homers in an RBI. And the delivery, a knuckleball wide, and it'll be one. Oh, they call that a strike. And it is one ball and two strikes. One and two, the count. Looked like that knuckleball was outside, but it must have caught the outside portion of the plate. And one, two, the count. Here's the one, two delivery. There's the folly floater, and it is swung on and missed strike three. Rick Leach smiling as he walks back. Well, you'd mentioned the folly floater just the other day was Steve Hamilton, uh, Frank, and uh, Nuxi pulled that one as he just looped the ball up to the home plate and reaches out on a strikeout. That is strikeout number 3,193 for Phil Necro. Only six pitchers in the history of the major leagues have struck out more men. All right, here's Lou Thornton, the left-handed hitting right fielder. A pitch wide, one ball and no strikes. Necro normally doesn't use that uh, loop pitch or the floater pitch until you the middle of the game. A fastball is swung on and missed for a strike, and it'll be one ball and one strike. Yanks lead 3-0. And the Jays are batting in the bottom half of the first inning. Uh, using it this early is going to make them all think about it. The That's entire for game. sure. Here's Nuxi with the delivery. A knuckleball is swung on and missed by Thornton, and it is one and two. Lou Thornton is hitting 250 on the year, 17 for 68. Other than Garcia, who has had 597 at bats on the season, there's only one other player in the lineup for the Jays this afternoon that has more than 100 at bats, and that's Burroughs. Again, the off-speed loop pitch or the floater pitch, and again, a swing and a miss, strike three as Thornton swung and missed. Necro has two strikeouts in the inning. One, two, three, go the Jays in the first at the end of an inning of play. New York three and Toronto nothing. They say you can find anything in the 9X Yellow Pages, and it's true. We found Mrs. Morris Adler, who is a dog psychologist. We live in a stressful world, Mike, and our doggies are under stress, too. I, uh, I noticed this German Shepherd here romping with a ball of yarn. Well, he was supposed to be a watchdog, but unfortunately he was raised with kittens. <laughs> it looks pretty silly. I wouldn't laugh. No, I, I guess he wouldn't make much of a guard dog, though. Well, not unless you were guarding yarn. You go for his yarn, he'll tear your arm off. So his owners found you in the 9X yellow pages. That's right, and he's here for our group therapy session where we help our doggies rediscover their personalities by taking them back to their primeval doggy roots. Really? Puppy, doggy, body, doggy, puppy, puppy. That's fascinating. Well, dog psychology, another reason the 9X Yellow Pages helps more people in New York find more goods and services. Whoa! Big bad, whoa! No matter what you need, it's always there when you need it. Did you know you can discover oil at Universal Automotive in Irvington, New Jersey? That's right. Universal Automotive is where you can discover Texaco's new formula Haviland Supreme 10W40. The motor oil with a special friction fighter that's been proven in fuel economy tests. Tests show that Haviland Supreme 10W40 exceeds API requirements for energy-conserving motor oil. And you still get Haviland's trooper-tested engine protection, too. Discover new formula Haviland Supreme at Universal Automotive, 1393 Springfield Avenue in Irvington, New Jersey. It's on sale for only 99 cents. All right, the leadoff batter for the Yankees in the second inning will be Ricky Henderson. Henderson in his first at bat, fly to left fielder Leach in his 0-4-1 in the game. Saruti with the pitch, a strike, and it'll be one ball and one strike to count to Ricky. It'll be Henderson, Manning, Lee, and Winfield. The Yanks lead 3 nothing. a... Very impressive start for Phil Necro. He retired three batters and two on strikeouts as he retired the Toronto Blue Jays in one, two, three fashion in the bottom half of the first inning. Check swing foul out of play. This went off to the right beyond the Yankee dugout, and it is one ball and two strikes. Blue Jays with a win yesterday clinched a better than 500 record against the Yankees in the season series. They've won seven games. The Yanks have won five. Here at Exhibition Stadium, the Yanks have an edge. They've won three of the five that have been played. Henderson swings and misses on an off-speed breaking pitch. And that is strikeout number one in the game for John Cerruti. One away and nobody on, and Don Mattingly will be the batter. Mattingly stepping in and one for one. He scored a run back in the first inning. He reached on a bad hop base hit over Cecil Fielder. 
He swings and hits a ground ball to second. Garcia moves to his left and has it. Throws on to first. Manningly is retired, and there's two down in the Yankees' second inning. Now Dave Winfield will be the batter. Talking a little bit about uh, Necro's strikeouts. He now has 3,000. 194 with the two strikeouts in the first inning and he is seventh on the all-time strikeout list. Four of the six players or pitchers ahead of him are active. Nolan Ryan, Steve Carlton, Tom Seaver, and Don Sutton. And the top three strikeout batters or pitchers with uh, 2,000 or more strikeouts are all active. Ryan, Carlton, and Seaver. Seaver moved ahead of Gaylord Perry just last week. Perry and Walter Johnson and Don Sutton are ahead of Necro. A swing and a miss and two strikes to count to the right-handed hitting Winfield. Winfield bounced out, pitcher to first, his first at bat. Cerruti gave up that bad hop base hit to Mattingly, then got Winfield on a bouncer right back to him. Looked like he was going to have a fairly easy first inning, and then all of a sudden, the dam broke, and he ended up giving up three runs, facing nine men. He had a couple of wild pitches, hit a batter, and there was an error in the inning. All three runs the Yankees score our unearned runs off the of pitcher's Cerruti. One-two, the count to Winfield. Here's the wind and the delivery. Strike three call. The fastball in the inside corner. Well, the uh, left-hander Cerruti doing an about face in the second inning. He retires the Yankees with two strikeouts and a very routine ground out. And the Yanks go very quickly and very quietly here in the second inning. No runs, no hits, and nobody laughs at the end of an inning and a half of play. The Yankees three and the Blue Jays nothing. Did you see Peabody's uh, presentation? I never saw anything so buttoned up. They'll definitely get a promotion after that. This whole report was in color. Charts, uh, graphs, transparencies, uh, the whole thing. He said his computer printer did it, the Okie Mate 20. Well, where'd he get the color? Okie Mate 20. That's made by Okie Data, isn't it? Good printer. Ah, oh, come on. Color printers cost a fortune, don't yeah. they? Peabody said his Okie Mate 20 cost less than $270. Oh, what? can't be. That's less than all his black and white printers. Where'd he get the color? Did you see those colors? Over a hundred, I Believe. Hey, I wonder if the Oki Mate 20 is hard to use. Mm -hmm. Peabody says it's easy. Mm -hmm. Peabody, Peabody says, says it's easy. easy. Well, he says even the ribbon's easy to change. I thought Peabody had an IBM computer, though. Isn't it an Apple? The Oki Mate 20 is compatible with both. IBM mm -hmm. and Apple? <laughs> Less than $270. I could afford an Oki Mate 20 for my offer. Uh, I think I'd better get one, too. Yeah, where, where'd Peabody get his? Why don't you ask Peabody? You mean Vice President Peabody? Hey! hey. Oki Data. We put business on paper. And Gary Howard. Your tri-state Chevy dealers got the big idea on small cars, like the new Sprint that delivers a big 55 miles per gallon, the best in America. Or new Spectrum with a big comfortable interior and great mileage. Or go for the Nova and get big time performance on America's new roomy subcombat. Hey, when it comes to small cars, your tri-state Chevy dealers got the big ideas and small base sticker prices to back them up. Now more than ever, your tri-state Chevrolet dealers got what you're looking for. All right, during this half inning, we'll take a look at the Yankee scoreboard brought to you by members only. When you put it on, something happens. Outerwear and sportswear that combine extraordinary styling, colors, and fabrics to take you beyond fashion to a bold new feeling about you. Members only. Frank? Cecil Fielder leads off the bottom half of the second. Right-hand hitter batting 306. Takes a pitch high for a ball. Necro back again with a fastball low. Two balls and no strikes. Fielder has four home runs and 16 runs batted in for the year. Straight up in the batter's box. Right-hand hitter strides and takes low. Ball three. Three and oh. Jeff Burrows is on deck. Kelly Gruber to follow here in the bottom half of the second. The Yankees are leading 3-0. Fielder looks at a strike, and it's 3-1. and one. Billy Smith coaches down at first base for the Blue Jays. Jimmy Williams, their third base coach. And Necro's knuckleball is grounded foul outside of third. Full count now, 3-2 and two on Cecil Fielder. We'll be saluting more of our home of champions radio network stations as we go along this afternoon. 3-2 pitch. He walked in with a low pitch. Here are some scores, Frank. First of all, before we go to the scoreboard, we might add that all divisional 5-1 win over the Yankees here and another by the St. Louis Cardinals with their 7-1 win over the Chicago Cubs yesterday afternoon. The Dodgers, of course, clinched earlier in the week. 
Oakland and Kansas City get underway uh, very shortly. And California and Texas have an afternoon game that starts just after 3 o'clock. Detroit-Baltimore game, Tanana against Martinez, and the game has meaning. Two teams are tied for third place in the Eastern Division of the American League. Jeff Burrows with a count of one strike. Burrows, a right-hand batter, hitting 257, six home runs, 28 RBIs, and the knuckleball misses. It's one and one. Kelly Gruber is on deck. Cecil Fielder at first base. Nobody out. Mattingly holding the runner and the pitch on the inside corner for a call strike two. One and two. The count to Burroughs. Negro studies the sign and pitches. There's the floater and it is lined down to the left field corner. Oh, foul ball. Well, Burroughs was looking for that one, John, and he laid wood to it and hit it just foul. Well, we talked a little bit earlier. Nexa normally doesn't use that pitch until the middle innings, and normally he uses it maybe twice a game, or usually just once a game, and already he has used it three times, and he's pitching here just in the second inning. All right, he's ready to work again, and a straight knuckle ball is down low. Next regular season game for the New York Yankees will be April 8, 1986 against the Kansas City Royals at Yankee Stadium. And it will be a day game at 1.30 in the afternoon. 1 o'clock in the afternoon opening day. Is that right, Brian? Pitches down low and the count goes full. 3-2 and two here on Burroughs. That's right. It will be a 1 o'clock game opening day of the 1986 season. Next... Uh, Exhibition game, and next uh, ball game, an exhibition game for the Yankees, Saturday, March 8th, against the Baltimore Orioles in Fort Lauderdale. Burroughs fouls one off, and the count stays at 3-2. and two. The Yankees are leading by a score of 3 nothing. The Toronto players and personnel were quite impressed following the ball game yesterday when Yankee second baseman Willie Randolph went to the Blue Jay clubhouse to congratulate the players. 3-2 delivery, grounded to shortstop. Nice hop for Meacham to Randolph to Mattingly. Double play, two down. All right, here's the rest of the scoreboard. Milwaukee at Boston, Porter against Hurst. Seattle at Chicago just getting underway. And Cleveland and Minnesota, that'll be Don Schulze against Mike Smithson. In the National League, here's some scores to report. Montreal and the Mets, one to nothing. Montreal leading after two and a half. Dan Chatsitter against Bill Latham. Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, no score at the end of an inning and a half. Rick Roden against Kevin Gross. Chicago at St. Louis, that'll be Reggie Patterson against Joaquin Andahar. Atlanta at San Francisco, Cincinnati at Los Angeles, and Houston at San Diego will be later West Coast starts. Kelly Gruber steps in, hits the first pitch in the air at a shallow right. Back Randolph from second base. He's under it and makes a one-hand catch, and that retires the side. Nothing across for the Blue Jays, and at the end of two, it's the Yankees three and Toronto nothing. <laughs> Against the generator or something. <laughs> All right, Don Baylor walked and scored in the first inning, and he takes a fastball wide. I'll tell you, once that uh, youngster Cerruti got loosened up, he started pitching. He comes in with a breaking pitch that's hit in the air to center field. Coming on, makes the catch. Shepard, the center fielder, and Baylor is gone. One out here on the top of the third. Well, he was really victimized in that first inning. Mattingly's bad hop base hit kept the inning alive for the Yanks. Garcia's error, and he seemed to be shaken by the two mishaps, not able to recover from him. He'll learn from that, as all pitchers do. And he had a couple of wild pitches and a hit batter and a lot of problems. I'm sure he's a little uptight, too, John. His first major league start before a crowd of 40,000 plus here in the city of Toronto, even though he had had uh, two and two-thirds innings of relief work. I'm sure he was uh, he was a little bit nervous, had to be. But he seems to be loose and throwing well now. He'll work to Andre Robertson, who hit the ball at Garcia threw wild to first base for an error. All three runs were unearned, by the way. Fastball on the inside corner for a call strike to Andre. Willie Randolph is on deck. Left hand of Cerruti brings the pitch and it is hit in the air to right center field. Well hit by tracking the right fielder, Thornton, and he makes the catch. 
Two down. Speaking of three unearned runs, when Nuxley pitched against the Blue Jays at Yankee Stadium on that September 13th game, when the Yankees were only a game and a half behind the Blue Jays in the Eastern Division race, three unearned runs beat Nuxley that night. That's right, three to two ball game. Mm-hmm. Willie Randolph hit by pitch in the first inning, quite upset by it. Now he stands in and check swings a foul straight back. That pitch was in on the bat handle. I think that's just one of the uh, few negatives of the Yankee season, though, Frank. There are a lot of positives to think about over the winter time for the Yankees in 1985. With the victories and the offensive and uh, pitching and defensive statistics they put on the board. Pitch is wide to Randolph, and the count goes one and one. No question in my mind that the Yankees, they're, they, during the season, they blended into a team as well. As they worked in, uh, some of the younger players, uh, Pasqua on occasion, toward the end of the year, Cotto a little bit. 1-1 one, one delivery, high, 2-1. Pagliarello had, I think, a better year than they expected of him. I could be wrong, but he had a good season. I think a better year than most people thought. Low inside pitch makes it 3-1 and one to Willie Randolph. This kid, uh, Saruti, throws either a fork ball or a split finger pitch on occasion. He delivers and misses with it down low. Randolph walks and is on base for the second time. The third walk given up by Saruti. Randolph checks in with Willie Horton, the first base coach. Stick Michael coaches at third base, as always, for the Yankees. And the batter is Henry Cotto. Cotto drove in a pair with a single in the first inning. Right-hand hitter, Butch Weininger is on deck. It's a winter sky here in Ontario. Patches of bright blue. The set and pitch. Cotto takes low, a fastball, ball one. Gray clouds. One O'Deal. High fly ball into shallow right. In comes the right fielder Thornton. Makes the catch and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, a walk, a man left, end of two and a half. It's the Yankees three, the Blue Jays nothing. Pretty good health soon. All right, Frank. And we go to the bottom half of the third. Ron Shepard leads off. Right hand hitting center fielder. Batting 125. No homers, one RBI. Negroes faced six men through the first two innings, gave up one walk, and the man erased in a double play. Pitches in for a call strike, let her hide. A moment ago, down on the sidelines, umpires Steve Palermo and Dave Phillips chatting with Bob Shirley and swing and a miss by Shepard, looking at Shirley's left hand that was bruised when it was hit by a line drive, batted ball in yesterday's game. I asked Bob before the ball game down in the clubhouse how the hand was. He said it's fine today. Sure, it's still sore, but no serious damage to his pitching hand. Two-strike delivery is high. Hey, we got a lot of listeners in the Plattsburgh, New York area, and they hear our Yankee games all season long on WIRY Radio. We say hello to the WIRY listeners this afternoon. Swing and a fly ball, center field. Henderson is there, makes the catch. One down here in the bottom half of the third. The Yankees lead 3-0. And in East Longmeadow, Massachusetts. Our Yankee fans, stay tuned to WIXY Radio for all the New York Yankee action throughout the season. And in Kingston, New York, WKNY Radio carries our Yankee games as a member of the Home of Champions Radio Network. Jeff Heron, the catcher, will stand in when the Blue Jays go to postseason play. They will have Ernie Witt and Jeff Heron as their catchers. Steve Nicosia was signed too late to be eligible for postseason play. So the veteran Witt 
and the rookie Heron will be their catchers. Nick Rowe ready to pitch to the right-hand batter. Wide, ball one. Heron has been to about four times with one base hit. Now the 1-0 delivery. Swung on, hit in the air, shallow left center field. Coming in, Cotto still coming, makes a running catch. And that's the second out. Manny Lee now. Another one of those young men from San Pedro de Macorís. They have a jumbo jet charter to bring a lot of folks from Dominica up to Toronto for the opening of the American League Championship Series on Tuesday night. Leah switch hitter, batting left. Swings and it's a one-hopper. Mattingly's got it. Necro covers and he's out at first base. Mattingly to Necro covering. Through three innings of play, Necro's faced nine batters. And at the end of three, it's the Yankees three, the Blue Jays nothing. What kind of car is this? It's a city limousine, Senator. Why is it going so slow? We're on a hill, sir. The whole parade is on this hill, and they're all passing us. Hey, this is Bob Hope. If engine knocks sap your car's power, try Texaco Super Unleaded. It can help knock out the knocks to give you superstar power for more car power. Don't you have another vehicle? Well, our Yankee friends in Jamestown, New York, stay tuned throughout the season to WKSN Radio for all the Yankee action in the Jamestown area. And in Lockport, New York, we have many listeners on WLVL Radio, another member of our Home of Champions Radio Network. And they'll be listening to you, John Gordon, right now. All right, Frank, the uh, leadoff batter for the Yankees, Butch Weiniger. And Weiniger drawing a walk in his first at bat. He takes a ball from uh, John Cerruti, and it's one ball and no strikes. Weiniger swings and lines one foul down to the Toronto bullpen. Left field way, and it'll be a one ball, one strike count. Now well, Hubie Brooks drove in Mitch Webster in the fourth inning with a single, helping the... Uh, Montreal Expos today. He's the first National League shortstop to drive in 100 runs in a season since Ernie Banks did it in 1960 with 117. Here's a looper foul down the right field line as Weiniger goes both left and right. And Srudy works ahead in the count now at a one ball, two strike count. Three to nothing, Yanks lead. On three first inning runs when the Yankees batted nine men and all runs were unearned. And if you're in the Meriden, Connecticut area, chances are you're listening to WMMW Radio for our Yankee game this afternoon. Slider misses, and it'll be two balls and two strikes. That was a close pitch. Weiniger almost went after it, but held off. 2-2 two, two the count to the right-handed hitting Weiniger. Check swing and a high delivery. And again, Butch holding off of a pitch that was out of the strike zone, and 3-2 in a full count. After facing nine men in the first inning, Cerruti got the side in order in the second, faced four men in the third. He walked Randolph with two outs, and then got Cotto on a fly ball to right field. The Yankees have three runs on two hits. And the Jays, no runs, and they do not have a base hit as yet in three innings of batting. Weiniger swings and lofts a high fly into shallow left field. Leach and shortstop Manny Lee. And it's going to be Lee to make the grab. There's one down. And Bobby Meacham stepping in. Before he does, we'll take a 10-second Long Jeans watch timeout on the New York Yankee Radio Network. Have you seen the exciting gold medal from Long Jeans, the world's most honored watch? See it at Walter Bauman Jewelers in Union, New Jersey. Hot dogs, apple pie, and pinstripes. The Yankee tradition continues on the station for sports. WABC, New York. All right, here's Meach and Bobby 0 for 1 in the game. Fly to center field in the first inning. He takes a strike. A fastball is in there, and it is no balls and one strike. Bright sunshine at the moment here at Exhibition Stadium. That's a welcome sign. Brightening things up a little bit. Here is the one strike delivery. It is a fastball at the letters for strike two. No balls and two strikes. Jim Acker, a right-hander, warming up again in the Blue Jay bullpen. Bobby Cox may want to get him some work in the ball game this afternoon. All right, Cerruti is ready ahead of Meacham at 0-2. And, and the delivery, a swing and a foul back. And it is one ball and two strikes. 
You know, Frank, just thinking about the uh, success of the Yankees in this 1985 season, and we may not have an opportunity to talk about it because it possibly could not come into play today. The Yankee bullpen has really had a good year this year, led by Dave Rigetti and Brian Fisher, and supplement help from pitchers like uh, Neil Allen. Here's a swing and a miss, strength three. Out is Meacham, two down in the inning, but you have to credit the bullpen for a good portion of this successful season for the Yanks. Well, the rookie, Brian Fisher, really came to the forefront of the bullpen, John. Uh, we had an idea, of course, what some of the guys out there could do, but he was an unknown factor. Most outstanding pitcher in spring training. Then uh, spent some time in the minor leagues at Columbus, but once the Yankees brought him up and started putting him in ball games, he really has shown he can be a stopper out of the bullpen. And you're right, the entire fan has done an excellent job. Here's a strike to Henderson, no balls, one strike. Couple of Bulldogs out there, Rich Bordy and Bob Shirley. There's guys that uh, have been called upon to start a few games and responded with key wins as starters and did very well in middle relief in the bullpen through the course of the year. And Rod Scurry, I think the fans should be uh, privy to the fact that he may be back with the Yankees in 1986. And Scurry, I think, was, made an impressive showing to the Yankee front office people in his uh, bid here. Line drive, and it is caught on a dive by Leach in left field. Wow, what a grab he made. Rick Leach with a diving catch in left field. He was running toward the foul line and reached out. He had the advantage of being left-handed that his right hand with the glove hand on was there to make the grab. That's quite a defensive play by Rick Leach to retire Ricky Henderson and the Yankees here in the fourth inning. Three up, three down, no runs, and nobody left. At the end of three and a half, Yanks three and the Blue Jays nothing. Young man, where have you been? In the kitchen, Dad, getting a bottle of Yoohoo. Yoohoo to you, too. Huh? Just answer the question. No, Yoohoo's a terrific chocolate soft drink. Delicious and nutritious. That's your excuse for being late for dinner? It was just ten minutes. Ten minutes or ten years, it's still irresponsible, irresponsible behavior. behavior. I know. After school, we all went to Bobby Gazinski's house. What did you do there? Uh, we hung around, talked about girls, and drank Yoohoo. You know, Yoohoo's got vitamins and milk. And then you came home. No, we had to go to Joey Del Nostra's house. Why? His sister's home from college. I see. Well, we wrapped with her and drank some Yoohoo. So you came home after you drank the Moo Moo? Yoohoo. Oh. Next, we went to Bobo's. Who is Bobo? Uh, it's a restaurant. So you sat around drinking Yoohoo's at this Boo-Boo's. Bobo's. And we also hooked at girls. Then you came home. No, then we went to P.J. Coyle's house. And? He was out of Yoohoo's. Look, young man, I hope you have learned your lesson here. What? Just think about it for a while. Okay. Are you sorry? Sure. Well, sorry doesn't butter the biscuit. This is going to be a long discussion, isn't it, Dad? Sorry doesn't walk the dog. I'll get some more Sorry Yoo -Hoo. doesn't... Yoohoo is also available in two-calorie diet chocolate fudge soda. For years, America has written on Monroe Maddox shocks as their favorite. And now, there's a new favorite on the way. It's the Monroe Gasmatic, a gas-charged shock. At TP Auto Parts of Springfield, buy three Gasmatics and get one free. Better ride, affordable price. TP Auto Parts of Springfield, located at 14 Center Street in Springfield, New Jersey. John, you mentioned Rod Scurry a moment ago. The consensus is if Scurry can throw strikes, if he can get them all over the plate, he'll get a lot of people out. The only uh, His only problem is a bit of wildness, but if he uh, throws in the strike zone, he is awfully hard to hit. Well, he was the winning pitcher in the game Friday night, a game the Yankees had to win to keep their divisional title hopes alive, and he pitched very well in three-plus innings that game. Here is Damaso Garcia to lead things off against uh, Necro in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Yanks lead three to nothing. And strike one and a foul. Here's a knuckleball hit in the air to left field. Very easy play for Henry Cotto. And he's got it. There's one down. There's another thought, Frank. Uh, and I think it probably will happen uh, in November when they announce the MVP and the Cy Young Award. The winners could be Yankees. They could be Don Mattingly and Ron Guidry. And if they aren't the winners, for sure they're going to finish runner-up. I would think they'll probably be the winners. I've got to feel the same way. George Brett would give uh, Mattingly the closest race. And Brett Saberhagen, I guess, or Quisenberry would give Gidry the closest race. The left-handed swinging Rick Leach, who made a fine catch on a line drive off the bat of Ricky Henderson batting. First pitch a ball. And the second of fastball is inside and two balls and no strikes. Gidry, of course, has won the Cy Young Award. Uh, Mattingly is the batting title winner last year. And he was the Sporting News Player of the Year last year. Knuckleball wide, 3-0 to Leach. I mentioned earlier on an earlier broadcast in talking to Rick Dempsey, the catcher for the Orioles, he told me that one of the publications, tell you in a minute, 
A fastball low, ball four. And on four pitches, Rick Leach draws a walk. The second given up by Necro. Here's the second base runner in the game for the Blue Jays. Yanks lead three to nothing, and uh, the batter will be Lou Thornton. Rick said that one of the publications uh, conducted a poll among the players uh, for their votes for Cy Young and Most Valuable Player, and he said his vote went to Gidry and Mattingly. Gidry for Cy Young and Mattingly for MVP. I think it, it's a high tribute. Uh, the greatest compliment an athlete can have is to be voted by his contemporaries, by the people he plays with and against. Swing and a miss by Thornton, and it's one ball and one strike. Well, postseason awards and 50 cents will get you a cup of coffee, but that's not to take away from the great seasons that Mattingly and uh, Gidry have had, and plus the fact it shows that uh, Gidry is uh, right in there from a standpoint of really helping out. Here's a little pop-up foul and out of play, and uh, could come back for another strong season next year, and it just shows you Mattingly. Here he won the batting title in 84. Now he has a chance to win the MVP title in 85. What's next? I mean, he uh, is on his way to just great stardom in uh, Major League Baseball. I, think, I don't think there's a doubt in anybody's mind that Mattingly could become one of the great, great players in the history of the game if he stays healthy and all things else being equal. The 1-2 delivery is a knuckleball hit in the air to center. Henderson moving to his right. He has it, and there's two down in the Blue Jay fourth inning. Yanks leading 3 to nothing on the strength of a three-run first inning, and uh, Phil Necro mowing him down here in the early innings of the game. Bottom of the fourth, two down, one on, and the batter is going to be Cecil Fielder. There will be only two 20-game winners in the American League. Ron Guidry with 22 wins and Brett Saberhagen with 20. Britt Burns and Frank Viola have each won 18. Four players have won 17. A fastball to Fielder, and it is a ball inside. One ball and no strikes. Cecil Fielder walked in his first at bat. And the delivery, a check swing. Let's see if he went around on it. He did not. He held off, and 2-0 and the count. Well, one of the true highlights of the 1985 season for the Yankees was Ron Guidry's 12-game winning streak. Yes. Still the longest winning streak in the American League. Here's the set now, and the delivery, a knuckleball hit on the ground, knocked down, and then passed to Randolph, and here's Henderson. Oh, he made a game run-saving play. That ball was scooting along the carpet here at Exhibition Stadium, and Henderson racing over into right center field, and he caught the ball just in time. And that one got in by him. It could have possibly been a run-scoring play for the Blue Jays. First hit of the game, fielder single pass Randolph. Yeah, it could have been two runs. I don't know how well fielder can run, but if that ball had gotten by Henderson and rolled out there to the wall and bounced around a little bit, certainly the lead runner, Rick Leach, would have scored easily, and fielder might even have been able to make it. That was a carpet scooter, and it went to quickly into the outfield area where Henderson's speed paid off as he cut it off. First hit of the ball game. All right, Burroughs, who bounced to a double play in his first at bat, swings and misses on a Necro fastball, and it is no balls in one strike. Yanks lead three to nothing, and Phil Necro trying for win number 300 in his illustrious career. Here's the set and the 0-1 delivery, a fastball high. Nuxie, who pitched for the Braves organization with Milwaukee and Atlanta up until two years ago when he joined the Yankees. He was a 16-game winner last year, and he's trying to win his 16th game here today. Foul and another fastball. Burroughs is getting nothing but fastballs here, and uh, Necro's ahead of him in one and two. You'll find uh, Gidry among the earned run average leaders. He's seventh behind uh, Dave Steeb, who will lead the league. Charlie Liebrandt, Brett Saberhagen, Jimmy Key, Bert Blylevin, and Tom Seaver, then Gidry. And the pitch, a knuckleball, strike three call. Oh, Necro really set up Burroughs on that at bat. He fed him fastball, 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 and then he just threw one of the typical great Necro knuckleballs, snapped it right across the plate. Burroughs looked at it for strike three called, and the inning is over. Necro has his third strikeout of the game. Four of the Blue Jays in the fourth. No runs a hit. They leave a pair. And at the end of four innings of play, the Yankees three and the Blue Jays nothing. A dramatization. Do you use a full-service stock broker or a discount broker? Uh, I use a discount broker. Why? 
Well, I don't want to be dealing with the hassles of a full-service broker who's pushing one stock or another. Uh-huh. I know what I want, and Manufacturer's Hanover handles my order as well as my old broker. Uh-huh. Maybe even better. <laughs> well, the Blue Jays make a pitching change, and Jim Acker, a right-hander, is coming on. The uh, left-hander, Cerruti, will pitch four innings. Two hits, three runs, all unearned. He walked three, and he struck out two. He hit a batter, and he had two wild pitches. He gave up all three runs in the first inning. Leadoff batter for the Yankees, Don Manningly, here in the top half of the fifth inning. For Acker, appearance number 61 on the year. He has 10 saves, seven wins, and two losses. 84 in the third innings pitched. And Manningly swings and lines one to center field. It's a base hit. Drops in front of Shepard, and Manningly is on with his second hit of the game. Remember last year in the last game of the season, Franklin Mattingly and Winfield went right down to the last at bat for the batting championship? Yes, uh, yes, I do. And uh, a lot of folks had the computers out there and the pocket calculators and so forth, figuring out all the options. Hmm. That was an amazing experience. It really was. That. I've never seen anything like that before. Right down to the last at bat. Here's Winfield. Dave is 0 for 2 in the game. Bounced the pitcher to Rudy and struck out, taking a called third strike. Stepping in to face the right-hander, Acker. They set by the big, tall right-hander, and it is a strike of fastball is in. No balls and one strike. Well, we certainly appreciate all the listener interest in Binghamton, New York, in this 1985 season on our home of networks station in Binghamton, WNBF. Winfield swings. It's a slow roller down the third baseline. Foul played by Kelly Gruber in foul territory, and a two-strike count to Winfield. Connecticut listeners at WNLC Radio in New London, Connecticut. A lot of folks, a lot of Yankee fans in the Connecticut area. Well, you got some great baseball arguments over there in the Connecticut area between Yankee fans and Red Sox fans, I'll tell you. They go after each other. Ready is the right-hander Acker. Here's a pitch to Winfield. It's a fastball inside, and one and two the count. Well, the Yankee fans in the Connecticut area and everywhere will have the upper hand this winter in the hot stove league. <laughs> the set, the look, and here's the pitch to Winfield. Missing low with a hard slider, and it'll be two and two the count. Mattingly opened the inning with a single to center. The Yanks are leading three to nothing, and they have out-hit the Jays three to one. There's one error in the game. Charged to the Blue Jays second baseman, Damaso Garcia. 2-2, Jim Acker to the right-handed hitting Winfield. Swing and a miss, strength three. Winfield went after a breaking pitch. Strung out twice in the game, and that is strength out number one for Acker. Of course, the Red Sox have uh, incentive this afternoon, John. Uh, they need a win to finish above 500 for the season. They have 81 wins, 80 losses, playing Milwaukee today. Acker ready now to Don Baylor, and Baylor takes a breaking pitch for a strike. No balls and one strike. One on, one out. Yanks leading 3 nothing in the top half of the fifth inning. Swing and a miss by Baylor, and it is two strikes. Salute the folks in Watertown, New York, who listen to Yankee baseball on WOTT radio. Another member of the Yankee Home of Champions Radio Network. On base, Mattingly, the pitch to Baylor. He chops a foul behind home plate, and it'll be two strikes to count still. Down in his first at bat, walked, and he came around to score. And in his second at bat, he flied to center fielder Ronnie Shepard. 0 for 1 in the game for Don Baylor. Acker ready, and here's the delivery. Baylor hits a chopper down the third baseline. It is a foul ball. Gruber plays it in foul territory, and two strengths account to Don Baylor. Jim Acker, right-hander. He's had a good season, 7-2. and two. Six two, 212-pounder from Freer, Texas, F-R-E-E-R. Ever been to Freer, Texas, Frank? No, I haven't. Think you'll ever get there? Well, you never know. <laughs> Here's the two-strike delivery. Baylor swings and hits a high fastball, high in the air to left. And Leach calling for it. He's got it. And there's two down in the inning.
Men have a pinch hitter here as Mike Pagliarulo comes out for Andre Robertson. We're talking about Pags a little while back uh, in the broadcast, John, having a, really, I think, a better year than uh, many thought that he would as far as the uh, power is concerned. The young man has uh, shown he can hit for power with 18 home runs, 60 runs batted in, and a batting average of 242. He's got to stick to hitting left-handed, though. Yeah, the pitch to Pally Rulo is wide for a ball and one ball and no strikes to count. Pags has been a little bit of a home run drought. He hit his 18th homer on the 9th of September, and it's the only home run that he hit in the month. Here's a shot to deep right field. Well, how about that? The home run drought is over. Catch them all, Mike Pally Rulo. Oh, he drilled that one well beyond the fence in right field, and the Yankees up the lead to five to nothing. Mike Pallarulo, he got a hold of an Acker fastball and drilled that one for his 19th homer of the year. That fans with Mike Pallarulo's home run, $50 will be contributed to United Cerebral Palsy by our friends at Realty World. Well, Manningly scores in front, and the two-run homer by Pallarulo, giving the Yankees a 5 to nothing lead. Here's Willie Randolph. Manningly scored a couple of runs today. Randolph... Fouls one back behind home plate. No balls and one strength to count. Pally Rillo gets another at bat and hits another homer. He would be the fifth player on the Yankees to hit 20 or more homers this 1985 season. Back in 1961, the Yanks had six players do it. And the last team in the major leagues to have five players do it was the Red Sox in 1979. All right, talking about home runs, our friends at Realty World this year, John, have contributed to United Cerebral Palsy now a total of $8,700. Congratulations to Realty World and all the contributions. Here is the 1-1 delivery, a fastball up and in, and it'll be a count of two balls and one strike. Yanks now have four hits in the game, two by Manningly. The home run by Pally Rulo and a single by Henry Cotto. Inside and three and one to count to Willie Randa. Yankees batting in the top half of the fifth inning, leading five to nothing. Here's Acker now with a pitch to Randolph up and in, and ball four. Willie draws the walk. The first given up by Acker in his relief stint. Cerruti started, worked four innings, two hits and three runs, all unearned. Walk three and struck out two. Three runs, three hits. Three strikeouts. Excuse me. <laughs> I'll get it right. Three walks, three strikeouts. Okay. Three runs, all on her, and hit a batter, and uh, threw two wild pitches. There goes Willie. A pitch, a swing and a miss by Cotto. Throw to second, and Randolph is in with a stolen base. So, Billy Martin has Willie Randolph on the run. His 16th stolen base of the year. Strike one to count to Henry Cotto. The set by the right-hander, Acker, and here's the pitch to Henry. A slider low and one ball and one strength to count. Kind of had a big hit for the Yanks in the first inning. A two-out bases loaded single that scored two runs. And he flied to right in the third inning. Five to nothing, the Yankees leading. And the pitch. Cano swings and fouls a fastball back and out of play. One and two the count. Fan will never have an easier chance to get a foul ball. And he blew it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Came right to him. Here the pitch. Oh, it's high, and it's two balls and two strikes. The ball hit on the glass pane behind home plate. It was rolling around in a very easy chance, and the fan had a glove. And it came right off the lip of his glove and fell away from him, and he lost it as it fell down into the grandstand seats. 2-2 two -two delivery. Cotto swings, hits a ground ball to short. Up with the ball is Manny Lee. Fires on to first to retire Henry Cotto and the Yankees here in the fifth inning. But the Yanks get a couple of runs and a two-run homer by Mike Pallarulo. There were two hits in the inning. 
And one man is left on at the end of four and a half innings of play. Yankees five and the Blue Jays nothing. It's Sears Auto Centers. Come into Sears Auto Centers for super savings and service you can count on. Now through October 13th, save 30% on Sears Best Road Handler all-season radial tires for excellent traction on wet and dry roads. The P15580R13 with a 50,000-mile limited wear-out warranty, regularly $79.99, now only $49.99. Save 50% on a dual-rate charger with 8 amps for charging auto, pickup, and farm batteries, or 2 amps for charging motorcycle batteries, regularly $44.99 in the fall 1985 general catalog, now priced at $22.49. Save $20 on a Sears Die Hard car battery with 525 amps of cold cranking power to surpass the starting requirements of most cars in group sizes 24, 24F, and 74. Regularly $74.99, now only $54.99 with trade-in. Installation included for most cars. For super savings and great service, come into Sears Auto Centers where we install confidence day and night. There's more for your life at Sears. Available at most metro area stores. Your Tri-State Chevy dealers got the big idea on small cars, like the new Sprint that delivers a big 55 miles per gallon, the best in America. Or new Spectrum with a big comfortable interior and great mileage. Or go for the Nova and get big time performance in America's new roomy subcompacts. Hey, when it comes to small cars, your Tri-State Chevy dealers got the big ideas and small base sticker prices to back them up. Now more than ever, your Tri-State Chevrolet dealers got what you're looking for. All right, we'll take a look at the Yankee scoreboard this half inning, brought to you by Members Only. It's more than the jacket has become a legend. Members Only is a whole range of sportswear you can live in. Out of wear that fits every move you make, a feeling you won't find anywhere else. That's Members Only. The Oakland A's got a run in the top of the first, leading Kansas City one to nothing. Chris Cotteroli against Mike Jones. California and Texas, Mike Witt against Jeff Russell. Tigers in Baltimore are 2-2 at the end of two and a half. That's Tanana against Dennis Martinez. Chad Lemon hit his 17th homer. Floyd Rayford is 18th. Milwaukee leading Boston 2-0. Uh, Billy Joe Robodeau has hit his second home run. Chuck Porter against Bruce Hurst. Seattle and Chicago no score at the end of a half inning. Moore against Capra. And uh, Cleveland and Minnesota no score after two and a half. Frank? All right, uh, Kelly Gruber sends a soft line drive to Mattingly. Don backpedals to make the catch, and there's one out. Changes for the Yankees. Mike Pagliarillo is in at third base after having batted for Andre Robertson. And Dan Pasqua has replaced Henry Cotto in left field. Cotto has moved to center, and Ricky Henderson is out of the ballgame. Ron Shepard now flied out to center fielder Henderson his first time up. Takes an Ecro pitch high and away, ball one. Bill blows on his pitching hand. Temperature hanging around the 50 degree mark here in Toronto. And a pitch is popped up on the left side. Pagliarulo in foul territory, plenty of room. Pounds the glove, makes the catch, and there are two out. Negro going for his 300th win, and the Yankees are leading five to nothing. After two, and Andahire has been knocked out. Kurt Kepchire in in the second inning. The West Coast games: Atlanta at San Francisco, Cincinnati at LA, and Houston at San Diego. Starting later on, Yankee scoreboard brought to you by Members Only, the brand that's changing the way America looks. Sidearm fastball to Jeff Heron is wide. Now knuckleball hit in the out of center field. Cotto is there. Waiting, and he makes the catch. An easy inning for Phil Necro at the end of five. The score, the Yankees five and the Blue Jays nothing. You know, the old-timers game really got to a rookie like me. All right, we move to the sixth inning here at Exhibition Stadium, and Butch Weiniger leading off, takes a pitch inside for a ball from Jim Acker. The set by the right-hander and the pitch. Fastball high. Acker does not use a windup. A relief pitcher by trade. He works from the stretch and set position, even with nobody on base. He comes back and gets a strike over the outside corner with a fastball. It's two and one. Dan Pasqua will bat in the leadoff spot, previously occupied by Ricky Henderson. The set and pitch coming. Taken high, and the count is 3-1 and one to Butch Weiniger. Weiniger has walked and popped up to the shortstop. The Yankees lead 5-0 here in the top of the sixth. 
Anchor sets right arm around the pitch. Hit on the ground to first base. Nice pickup by Cecil Fielder. Flips to his pitcher, Acker, covering, and Weininger is retired. Frank, you just uh, mentioned the folks at WABC, our flagship station, and the work they've done with us this year. They had an interesting contest, a sponsored uh, contest for some winners that come to Toronto for the weekend. We had an opportunity to meet uh, Jose Arijos and uh, Diane Swarick. Jose Arijos from uh, New Jersey and Diane Swarick also from New Jersey. Trenton for Diane and Jose, I think, from Irvington, New Jersey. A nice chat with them at the hotel yesterday. And congratulations and to them on winning the contest. Yeah, they were really thrilled to be around some of the Yankee players and see the ball games, have a tour of Toronto. Bobby Meacham is 0 for 2, and he takes a strike. Acker back with a curveball outside, and the count is 1 and 1. Meacham has flied to center and struck out. The Yankees lead 5-0 here in the top of the sixth. The stretch by Acker, the set, the kick, the pitch. A ball, nope, that's a strike. Just got the outside corner. One and two on Meacham. Acker bends down, takes the side from Heron. One-two delivery. Hit on the ground, right side, fielded by the second baseman Garcia. Back over to Felder in time. Fielder, rather. And that will retire Meacham. And now let's take a 10-second Ron Jean's watch timeout on the New York Yankee Radio Network. Have you seen the exciting gold medal from Ron Jean's, the world's most honored watch? See it at Manny's Jewelry in the Bronx, New York. Relive the highlights of every Yankee game weekday mornings with Steve Albert and Yankee Replay on 77. Dan Pasqua bats for the first time, hitting 212, nine home runs, 25 runs batted in. And he takes a slider for a call strike one. Pasqua will not see many pitchers other than breaking balls. He swings on this one and pops it foul to the seats behind the third base dugout. The count nothing and two on Pasqua. Once he develops the ability to hit the breaking pitch, he's going to be a very dangerous hitter for the New York Yankees. He has tremendous power. Runs well enough, good drawing arm, gets a good jump on the ball in the outfield. Here's the pitch to him. Swing and a miss on a slider in the dirt. Tagged out by the catcher, Heron. Three up, three down go the Yankees. And at the end of five and a half, the score, New York five and Toronto nothing. Hi, I'm Art. And I'm Ellie. What's the big baseball broadcast from Thornapple Valley? Hot dog. Bottom half of the sixth inning. The Blue Jays will have Matty Lee, Damaso Garcia, and Rick Leach coming on to bat. Lee, a switch hitter, grounded out to Mattingly to Necro covering in the third inning. Number four, Matty Lee. The Yankees are out in front, 5 0. The Yankees with two runs in the, or rather, three runs in the first inning and added two on Pagliarulo Sommer in the fifth. Knuckleball high and away, ball one. Dan Pasqua sets up very shallow in left field. Cotto, very shallow straight away in center. And Winfield on a few steps in right. Pitches hit in the air to left field, moving for it and not able to get it in foul territory. Pasqua had to pull up short of the seats. One ball and one strike. In the Hartford, Connecticut area, we're happy to have our Yankee fans who listen to WPOP Radio for all the Yankee action on the home of champions, Radio Network. Necro ready to pitch to Lee. Knuckleball high and away. In the Albany, New York area, WROW Radio has brought its listeners the Yankees games all season long. Necro is high and away with a fastball and falls behind 3-1 and one to Manny Lee, the shortstop. Bags playing in at third base. Now the wind down the pitch. On the inside corner, Lee went spinning away. Full count, three and two.
Blue Jays get right-hander Bill Cottle up in the bullpen. He'll probably pitch an inning or two. Pitch is high to leave ball four. And the Jays have a runner here in the sixth inning. A leadoff walk to Manny Lee. The third walk given up by Necro. Bill has also struck out three. The second baseman, number seven, Domaso Garcia. Domaso Garcia now has flied to center and flied to left. The Blue Jays have only one hit in the ball game, a single to center in the fourth inning by Cecil Fielder, the first baseman. Necro throws to first. Lee is safe. And the pitch. Fastball inside. And the pitch. Low and outside. 2 0. The probable pitchers for the first three games of the uh, American League Championship Series have been posted. Hit on the ground, left side. Wicked hop, handled by Meacham to Randolph. One, back to Mattingly, double play. Boy, Meacham made a good play there on one of those very infrequent bad hops you'll get off the AstroTurf. Must have hit a little seam out there, but he handled it. 6-4-3 double play. Two down, and the batter will be Rick Leach. In the opening game on uh, Tuesday night, it'll be Dave Steve for the Blue Jays and Charlie Liebrandt. For the Kansas City Royals, Steve 14 and 13, and Lee Brandt 17 and 9. That game to be played here in Toronto. Leach checks his swing on a high pitch out of the strike zone. Then on Wednesday afternoon, Jimmy Key 14 and 6 against Bud Black 10 and 15. Friday night, Doyle Alexander is scheduled to start for the Blue Jays against Brett Saberhagen. Alexander 17 and 10 and Saberhagen 20 and 6. Ball two is thrown low to left hand hitting Rick Leach and now ball three comes in low. Three balls and no strikes. Necro winds and delivers. A fastball down the middle. Three and one to Leach. The Yankees are leading five to nothing. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Three and two. Thanks to a pair of double plays, Necro so far has pitched to just two men over the minimum. And strike three is called. Leach started down to first base, and he is called out on strikes by plate umpire Larry McCoy. That will be the fourth strikeout for Phil Necro. And at the end of six, the score, the Yankees five and the Blue Jays nothing. The generation before you was taught that small is beautiful. And less is more. But you know better, don't you? Chip, 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 chip. Introducing Doritos brand tortilla chips. Now with more nacho cheese flavor than ever before. Because more is better. Right. <laughs> We're Manufacturers Hanover. Helping you grow wherever you are. A furniture manufacturer expands his inventory in Cleveland. With our commercial corporation behind him. A family adds a playroom in Tampa. With a home equity loan from our Finance One subsidiary. A corporate jet takes off from O'Hare. Our leasing corporation did that. A homeowner buys a lawnmower in Portland. That's our MasterCard he's using. A tool and die firm selects our treasury management system in St. Louis. Our bank's financial management system subsidiary developed it. The World Financial Center springs up in New York. That's our bank's real estate division. They can handle almost anything. The CIT Financial Corporation is acquired. Good news. Now we can help even more people in even more places. We're manufacturers Hanover. And now you know why we're called a financial source worldwide. New York's Yankee Station. Talk Radio. WABC. Well, we have a new pitcher and a new second baseman for the Blue Jays. The pitcher, Bill Cottle. 
And John will tell you about him in a moment. We continue our salute of our home of champions radio network stations. Our good listeners in the Montpelier, Vermont area get their Yankee broadcast on WSKI Radio. Got a comment there. One time I worked for a station in North Carolina called with the call letters of WSKY, but this is WSKI Radio in Montpelier. And in the Syracuse area, we have many, many Yankee listeners on WSYR Radio. Another fine member of our home of champions radio network. Jim Acker went two innings, allowed two runs on two hits. He walked one and struck out two. The hits off of him, a single by Don Mattingly and a two-run homer by Mike Paul Yerulo. And now we go to the seventh inning. The Yankees are out in front by a score of five nothing. Garth Orge is on to play second base for the Blue Jays, and here's John Gordon. All right, thank you. Bill Cottle is pitching now the right-hander. He, too, works from a set position and fires a fastball at Mattingly. The leadoff batter hits down to the Yankee bullpen, and it'll be no balls and one strike to count. Cottle is appearing in his 67th game. That's second on the staff to Gary Lavelle, who had appeared in 69 games. And Cottle has 14 saves, a four-win, six-loss record, and a 2.81 ERA. Here's the set by the right-hander, Cottle, and the delivery, Mattingly swings and fouls one to the Jays' dugout off to the left and out of play. Two strikes to count. Blue Jays and the Oakland Athletics made a big trade in the offseason. Uh, Cottle coming to the Toronto club. Alfredo Griffin and Dave Collins, two of the principal players that were traded to the Oakland Athletics. Here's the set now. They look by Cottle and they pitch a bouncing ball up the middle. Garth Orr's can't get it, and Mattingly has reached with his third hit of the ball game. A single to center. Mattingly is three for four in the game, and the batter is going to be Dave Winfield. It'll be the fifth hit for the Yankees. The Jays have only one. And the Yanks lead by a five to nothing score. Winfield 0-4-3 in the game. He struck out twice and grounded out to the pitcher. Mattingly on with a 3-4-4 day. Here's the set now by Cottle in the delivery. A fastball on the inside corner for a strike. No balls and one strike. The Yanks got three runs in the first. They batted around. Nine men coming to the plate. Henry Cotto had a two-run single, and Willie Randolph had an RBI when he was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. And the Yanks added two more in the fifth on a two-run homer by Mike Pagliarulo. Winfield swings. It's a pop-up behind home plate. Here's Heron, the catcher, coming back, but this one's out of play, and it'll be a two-strike count to Dave Winfield. That was Don Mattingly's 210th base hit of the year. He had 207 hits last year when he led the league in hitting with 343. Many more times at bat this year, though. And he is 210th base hit. Moves him into the number eight spot in the all-time hit list for the Yankees, tying him with Lou Gehrig, who had 210 hits in 1934. Two strikes to count to Winfield. It's the top half of the seventh inning. And one on and nobody out. Here's a foul off the body of the batter, Winfield, for a strike, and it's still 0-2. No balls, two strikes to count. Mattingly at first base. Well, the scooter man has joined us here. He wants to say goodbye. Yeah, you know, I say hate goodbye, it, Scooter. scooter. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like George Burns and Tracy Allen. That's right. That was, that was a great line. I like that, Gordon. <laughs> but no, it uh, it is a sad moment. I mean, they, you wait for the season to start, and then you can't wait till it's over. But when it's over, you realize you're going to miss all the people you've been talking to all year, and the camaraderie we've had in this booth with uh, Frank Messer, who I've worked with the longest and uh, John Gordon and Brian Ferguson and uh, Bob Horvath, who's a mystery man at times, part owner of Las Vegas, but 
Bill White. Now, Bill White might not be able to get here. And he said for me to convey his best wishes. I think he'll be over, but we've got a little mess over there, you know, on TV today. They're doing a simulcast on both uh, Picks and uh, Sports Channel, and we don't know where we're going, up and down and getting in each other's way. But I do want to say I've enjoyed it again, working with all of you again, Frank and uh, John and Brian. Well, we've enjoyed having you, of course. And it was a great year for the Yankees. One of the highlights, I have written down uh, the five biggest highlights of the year, and uh, Phil Rizzuto Day makes the oh. top five list, and uh, we had a lot of fun with that. Oh, that was really great, and, and, and it's been fun, although today, after yesterday... Here's a pop-up by Winfield on the left side of the infield. Gruber, the third baseman, coming in. Catches the ball right at the pitcher's mound for out number one in the Yankees' seventh inning. Anyway, let me go. You two continue well, to do your... You have a good winter. Job. What are your plans now? You're just going to rest Let's and relax? around until the first snowflake hits the ground, then I'm gone. Are you? Okay, it's well, have a good time. Climate. and Nice working with you once again, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next year. Thank you, Frank. Okay. Frank. I'm and John. John. <laughs> and John. <laughs> Get to know the player, Scooter. <laughs> okay, Scooter. Have a good winter, buddy. <laughs> Here is Don Baylor, and he fouls the first pitch back and out of play, and it is no balls and one strike. Scooter, yeah. we'll see you uh, March 8th in Fort Lauderdale against the Baltimore Orioles. Is that what it is, the next game? That's, That's the next, the next game. game. All right, I'll be there. It'll be an afternoon game and bring the coffee. <laughs> Baylor batting as the Yanks uh, bat here in the seventh inning. They lead five to nothing, and a strike to Baylor on the inside corner. Bill Cottle working in his first inning, and the third uh, Toronto pitcher to work in the game. John Cerruti started. Acker in the fifth inning, and here's Cottle in the seventh inning. Yanks are leading five to nothing, and the excitement building here for Phil Negro in his 300th win. Nine outs away. Here's the set by Cottle in the pitch, a fastball on the inside, and it is two and two the count now. Attendance being announced here, over 40,000 again today, right, Frank? 44,422, the paid attendance today. Smallest crowd of the series, they had 47,000 for a new record. Here's a bounder foul past Dick Michael at the third base coaching box, and it'll be one and two the count. Yeah, Brian Ferguson, our producer, just made the comment, that's a full house. It is a full house. Brian, you're right. Three fours and a pair of deuces. And all the seats here in the stadium filled. All right, buddy. 47,000 plus for the Friday night game, which is a new attendance mark here. And 44,600 plus yesterday, and 44,400 plus today. Baylor swings. It's a high pop-up foul territory on the left side. Possible play for Gruber. The wind holds it out of play, and it'll be a 1-2 count still to Don Baylor. Yanks batting with one down and one on here in the top half of the seventh inning. Three in the first for the Yankees, two in the fifth, and the 5 nothing lead. Blue Jays have had really only one threat in the game in the fourth inning. They had runners at first and third with two outs, and Necro struck out Jeff Burroughs. Baylor swings. It's a fly ball to left. Leach toward the line and waiting. Now the wind blowing it back uh, into the left field area. He makes the catch for the out, and there's two away in the Yankees' seventh inning, and the batter will be Mike Pagliarulo. Uh, John Gordon talking about attendance now. The Yankees' uh, attendance is official for the season. The makeup game with the Tigers, of course, will not be played. So the Yankees uh, playing 80 games at home instead of the scheduled 81. Drew for the year, 2,214,587. I believe in round figures up 300,000 from last year. And that's uh, certainly a plus sign for the Yankees. All right, here's the left-handed swinging Pagliarudo. He hits one sharply to center field over a Shepard. He's got a beat on it and makes the grab. And out on the pitch is Pagliarudo. Pags it homered as a pinch hitter in the fifth inning, staying in the game, playing at third base. He's now 1-4-2 in the game as he lines out to center fielder Shepard. Yanks, no runs ahead. The leadoff single wasted as Don Mattingly is stranded at first. And one man left on. In the middle of the seventh inning here at Exhibition Stadium, the crowd of 44,000 standing for the stretch, and it's the Yankees 5, the Blue Jays nothing.
We're here at the A&L Superette in Queens because a very strange thing has occurred. This is Mario, the owner. Mario, what's going on? Well, like you said, a very strange thing has occurred. Uh, what is that, Mario? At exactly 11.33 a.m., my store was invaded by monkeys. Yes, I see them. Thousands of monkeys. Your chimps, your Oh, uh, Do you know what brought them out? No. Uh, were you having a special? No, I had a sale on detergent. They don't use detergent, do they? I don't I think got so. some new dirty magazines. And you don't think they come in for dirty magazines? Mario, there goes one of them. Yeah. What does he have in his hand? Oh, that's your frozen fruit. Uh, a frozen fruit? Yeah, frozen fruit. It's real frozen fruit on a stick. All natural. Well, what flavors does it come in? Oh, succulent strawberry, chewy cherries, big white bananas. That's it. They're here for the bananas. Oh, how about them more? You, you mean you don't mind? No. Monkey business is as good as any business. Froze fruit, the gourmet fruit bar that's all natural. No monkey business. As little as 68 calories per bar in 13 mouth-watering flavors. So real, even the experts love it. Excuse me, I, I hear you have froze fruit here, eh? My brothers and I are interested in coconut. That's right, the coconuts. Froze fruit. The only thing unreal is the taste. Your tri-state Chevy dealers got the big idea on small cars, like the new Sprint that delivers a big 55 miles per gallon, the best in America. Or new Spectrum with a big comfortable interior and great mileage. Or go for the Nova and get big-time performance on America's new roomy subcompact. Hey, when it comes to small cars, your tri-state Chevy dealers got the big ideas and small base sticker prices to back them up. Now more than ever, your tri-state Chevrolet dealers got what you're looking for. Well, as we move along in our ball game to the bottom half of the seventh inning, we salute all our friends and neighbors in Ithaca, New York, who have listened to New York Yankees games throughout the 1985 season on WTKO Radio. And in the Tupper Lake, New York area, we have many thousands of listeners to Yankees baseball on WTPL-FM Radio, another member of our home of champions, Radio Network. John? All right, here is uh, Lou Thornton to lead off for the Jays in the bottom half of the seventh inning. And a swing and a miss on a knuckleball for strike one. One ball and one strike to count to Thornton. 0-4-2 in the game. He struck out and flied out. Cecil Fielder, who will bat next, is the only man in the Jays order that has a base hit off of Necro this afternoon. He singled back in the fourth inning. And the pitch. Fastball inside, and it'll be 2-1 to count. Necro has used perhaps more fastballs this afternoon than in uh, any other start. And he's also used the floater knuckler a little bit more than he's used, although he hasn't used it since the uh, early innings. Here's a knuckleball wide. Three and one to count now to uh, Lou Thornton. Five to nothing, Yankees leading. A five-run uh, total for the Yanks. Three in the first and two in the fifth. Swing and a miss and a fastball by Thornton. And three and two the count. Nuxie has walked three in the game. He walked uh, Fielder back in the second inning. He walked uh, Leach in the fourth inning. And he walked Lee last inning in the sixth. Here's the 3 2 pay pitch. Fastball swung on and hit to the shortstop, Bobby Meacham. They pop up to Bobby. He's got it, and there's one down. Leadoff batter Lou Thornton retired on the pop up, and Cecil Fielder has the only hit of the game for the Jays. It was a clean hit, a sharply hit ground ball past Randolph at second base. Henderson made a very good play. He cut it off in right center at the gap. Had that ball gotten through, it would have scored a run for the Jays, possibly two. And had this not been an AstroTurf infield, Randolph would have played the ball, and it would be a no-hitter right now for Necro. <laughs> a strike and a fastball to Fielder, and it is no balls in one strike, so Phil Necro certainly within grasp of winning his 300th game here this afternoon as he leads 5 to nothing in the late innings of the game, the bottom of the seventh inning. Nuxie's first win back on the 13th of May, 1965 when he was with the Milwaukee Braves beat the Pittsburgh Pirates in relief mm -hmm. that was a long time ago yeah he was a relief pitcher then here is the two strike delivery a fastball high and it'll be one ball and two strikes over in uh, Williamsport Pennsylvania John folks are listening to every word you say on WWPA radio here's a one two delivery a knuckleball swung on and hit foul down the right field line out of play and a count of one ball and two strikes still to Cecil Fielder. We appreciate all the stations on our New York Yankees Home of Champions radio network and all the efforts put in by the station managers, program directors, traffic department people, announcers. My apologies to a lot of the announcers uh, for throwing perhaps station breaks in unexpectedly. I know how it is to go running down the hallway and race into the studio all out of breath. 
Here's the line as Necro hesitated for a moment. Now he's running in the 1-2 delivery. Fielder again fouls to the right and out of play, and it's a ball and two strikes to count. And, of course, to all the engineers who kept the stations going so you could listen to Yankees baseball. People too numerous, of course, to mention, but we appreciate the efforts, and we do understand the efforts put in by everybody connected with every station on our network. Fielder batting at one ball and two strikes. Jeff Burroughs is due up next. And Necro ready now as he faces the right-handed hitting first baseman. The one-two delivery. There's the floater, and it is right off the end of the bat. A spinner to Mattingly at first. He's to the base in plenty of time to retire Cecil Fielder, and there is two down in the inning. Now, that's the first we've seen of the floater pitch, uh, Frank, since the early innings of the game. I think first time he's thrown it since he, uh, he threw it to Jeff Burroughs. I think second inning was the last time he used it. So there's two away, and here's Burroughs now, who's grounded into a double play and taking a called third strike. Well, Phil, of course, the oldest player in the history of the game to win 15 games in a season. If he wins today, it'll be his 16th victory of the year. Jack Quinn, who was a uh, Yankee, here's a bounder foul down the third baseline and out of play. Won nine games at the age of 46 when pitching for the Philadelphia Athletics in 1930. Oxy has a no-hitter to his credit. He uh, no-hit the San Diego Padres on the 5th of August in 1973. Quite a record compiled by the veteran right-hander Phil Necro, 46 years of age. Turned 46 just before the season started on April 1st. And Burroughs batting that one strength to count to him. He's 0-4-2 in the game. Here's the pitch. A fastball is low. Of special interest in the game today is Phil and Joe Necro's father, who is uh, resting comfortably. Wheeling West Virginia Hospital and has been hospitalized for the last week and a half. Here's a line drive down the left field line, curving, and it is a fair ball. It's into the corner. Here's Pasco to quickly dig it out. Burroughs on his way to second. They're going to have a play on him, and he is safe. Uh, Burroughs, who is uh, running almost in slow motion on his way to second base, reaching safely there, and uh, Randolph came ahead of the bag to get the throw from Pasco. Had he stayed in the bag, I think they would have had him. Hit number two in the game for Toronto. Phil's father was uh, has been ill uh, most of the year and was taken to a hospital in Wheeling, West Virginia, for a operation about a week and a half ago, and Phil and Joe both went home to visit with their dad and also with their mom and other family members. Here's the pitch now to the right-handed hitting Kelly Gruber, the third baseman, and it is one ball and no strikes. The pitch was down low. 1-0 the count. Blue Jays are batting in the bottom of the seventh inning. And the delivery, fastball swung on and fouled back and out of play. And it'll be a one ball, one strike count to Gruber. The Blue Jays will start American League Championship Series play against the Kansas City Royals here Tuesday night. They'll play two games here Tuesday night and Wednesday afternoon. They have an off day on Thursday, and then they'll play two additional games in Kansas City, a third game in Kansas City if it's necessary, an off day Monday, and back here in Toronto for games six and seven in the AL Championship Series if necessary. Seven games could be played in the Championship Series this year. Prior years, it has been a best three out of five series. A knuckleball swung out and fouled back and out of play. 2-2 two, two the count. Necro to Kelly Gruber as the Jays bat in the bottom of the seventh, trailing five to nothing in the game. You know, John, you look at the championship series, uh, both managers, Bobby Cox of the Blue Jays and Dick Hauser of the Kansas City Royals, coming out of the Yankees organization. Bobby Cox, a very successful minor league manager after playing for the New York Yankees, a very successful manager in the Yankees minor league organization. 2-2 delivery, a fly to center, and this should do the seventh for the Jays. Waiting is Cotto. He's got it, and Necro six outs away from his 300th win. As the Jays go down in the seventh, no runs, a base hit, and a man left. Only the third they've stranded in the game, and at the end of seven innings of play, the Yankees five and the Blue Jays nothing. Hey, is your car a 3,000-pound weakling? Does it cringe at climbing hills, pinging and knocking? 
Do other cars laugh? They pass yours and even throw stones or muddy water in your car's face and leave your car behind in a cloud of exhaust? Help your car fight back with Texaco's High Octane Super Unleaded. Texaco Superstar Power helps knock out the knocks for more car power. Now even a 3,000-pound weakling can have muscle. Naval Express has six non-stops daily to Washington Dulles International Airport for just $19 off peak or $29 peak with absolutely no restrictions. And because there are no restrictions to talk about, Naval Express would like us to use the time that's left in this commercial to talk baseball. And right now, we'd like to salute the ladies and gentlemen who have made this uh, these Yankee broadcasts possible, our engineering staff at our home station, WABC Radio in New York, Jimmy McGuire... Kiki Hooper, Mike Maimon, Harry Lang, Sue Ronneberger, Frank D'Elia, Sid Simon, Gene Maxwell, Al Gold, Lori Klein, Joe Barone, Gene Trotta, Lula Shepard, Carl Cush, and Dave Kreisworth. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you and salute you for People Express because they have no restrictions to talk about. We were able to talk baseball. And now let's take a 10-second Longines watch time out on the New York Yankee Radio Network. Have you seen the exciting gold medal from Longines, the world's most honored watch? See it at Monique Jewelers, Jackson Heights, New York. If you can't get to the game, you can see it on the radio here on the Station for Sports, 77. WABC, New York. All right, the Yankees are batting in the eighth inning. Uh, Willie Randolph, the leadoff batter, he shoots a foul off to the right now to play. No balls in one strike. The Yanks lead five to nothing. They have out hit the Jays five to two. There's one error in the game. It was charged to uh, Jays second baseman Damaso Garcia. Opened the floodgates for the Yanks in the first inning. Nine men batted, and three runs came in, staking Phil Necro to an early three nothing lead. Then the Yankees added two more in the fifth on a Pally Rulo homer. A caught fastball is outside, and it'll be one and one to count. Here's the shot to look by the right-hander. Really nobody on. And they pitch a strike on the inside corner to Willie. And it is one and two. Connell, a reliever by chain, working from a set position rather than the full windup. As he faces the Blue Jays and or faces the Yankees in the top half of the eighth inning. Randolph this afternoon. As he awaits the pitch, he takes a ball wide. And two and two the count. He is yet to have an official at bat. He was hit by a pitch. With the bases loaded in the first inning, he drove in a run with that hit by pitch. He walked in the third, and he walked again in the fifth. 2-2 the count to Willie. Set by Cottle in the delivery. High and a three and two. Yankees and Jays playing the final regular season game here this afternoon. Here's the set now by the right-hander Cottle. And the payoff pitch to Randolph. He walked him, ball four. That's the third walk that Randolph has received in the game. And he has been on base all four at bats. Well, John Gordon, as we wait for Henry Cotto to step in, we'd like to thank the folks at Adler Communications for their cooperation on our broadcast this year. And uh, first of all, of course, Brian Ferguson, who has been our producer for every game of the 1985 season, and Bob Horvath, who has been our engineer for nearly every game of the season. To Arthur Adler, our executive producer, to Carolee Pross, Kathy Korleski, Mark Bingham, and Lisa Genazzo. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, very, very much for your help, your friendship, and your cooperation. All right, Frank. Words well said for the folks with Adler Communications. And a foul by Henry Cotto and out of play. No balls and one strike. Cotto the batter. Henry had a big hit for the Yanks back in the first inning. A bases loaded single that scored two. He takes a breaking pitch low and one and one to count to Henry Cotto. Randolph on at first with a leadoff walk. And here is Connell's pitch. Cotto swings, and he hits a fly to left. This one is well hit. Leach is chasing. It is out of here. 
touch them all, Henry Cotto. Home run number one on the year. Boy, I tell you, with that wind blowing out to right field, it takes a powerful blast to get one out of this ballpark, and Henry Cotto has just pulled one to left field over the fence for his first home run of the 1985 season. Randolph scoring in front, and the Yanks now lead 7 to nothing. Oh, a home run for Henry Cotto. That's his first major league home run. So Henry Cotto on the board with his first major league homer. And the Yankees leading seven to nothing. Pitches wide uh, to Butch Weiniger. One ball and no strikes. Second home run of the game for the Yanks. The Yanks now have 175 homers for the season. And the pitch. It's high. No, it's at the letters for a strike. And it'll be one and one to Butch Weiniger. Butch is 0-4-2 in the game. He has popped to the shortstop and bounced out on the right side. Carlo working now. And here's the pitch to Weiniger. A swing and a foul out of play, and the count will be one and two. Well, a reminder to the fans, with Henry Cano's homer, 50 dollars will be contributed to United Cerebral Palsy by Realty World. RBIs for Cotto are his third and fourth of the year. Weiniger takes the ball and 2-2 the count. Here's the delivery, a swing and a foul out of play. Past the Yankee dugout and two balls and two strikes. Big day for Henry Cotto. He's got a couple of hits and four RBIs. Home run and a single. Two-run homer to left and a bases loaded single back in the first inning. Weiniger batting and a pitch to Butch. Line to right and it's hit fairly deep. Back and leaping up is Thornton and he makes the grab. He made a fine catch. He may be hurt. He's a little slow in getting up. It does appear that he's going to be all right. And an outstanding defensive play by Thornton in right field. Lou Thornton going back and reaching up at the last moment, making the grab. That'll be the first out of the inning. That's the uh, second uh, outstanding defensive play by the Toronto outfield. Rick Leach made a catch off of Ricky Henderson in the fourth inning, taking an extra base hit away from uh, Ricky Henderson. Here's Bobby Meacham now, a bat left-handed against the right-hander Bill Caudill. Yankees leading seven to nothing. And the pitch. Meacham swings and fouls off to the right and out of play. A one-strike count to Bobby Meacham. 0-4-3 in the game for Meach. He is fine to center, he is struck out, and he is grounded out. A walk to Randolph. Home run by Cotto over the left field fence. Weiniger is just lined out to right, and here is Meacham. A Cottle pitch that's down low and in the dirt. And it'll be a ball and a strength to uh, Bobby Meacham. Even if your team can't guarantee a touchdown, Frito-Lay can always guarantee fresh-tasting snacks. We go to the top half of the ninth inning. The Yankees will have the top of the batting order coming on. And a quick reminder, the 86 Yankees schedule is now available. Just send a self-addressed stamped envelope to 1986 Yankees schedule. Public Relations Department, Yankee Stadium, Bronx, New York, 10451. Don Mattingly to lead off. Mattingly is three for four this afternoon. He has scored two runs. He'll face left-hander Steve Davis on the pitch for the Blue Jays. Swings on the first pitch and fouls it to the seats on the left side. Bill Caudill went two innings, gave up two runs, two hits. He walked one. And the pitch to Mattingly. Breaks low and away. A ball and a strike. Fastball is fouled. That will reach the seats just behind the Blue Jays' dugout. In saluting folks who have been so helpful during the course of the 1985 season, 
I want to uh, certainly express my appreciation to the various public relations directors throughout the American League, Bob Brown in Baltimore, Dick Brejani in Boston, Tom Seaborg, Tim Mead, John Sabano with the California Angels. Pitched to Mattingly, line foul to the seats off the right side. Paul Jensen in Chicago, Bob DiBiazzo and Rich Minch in Cleveland, Dan Ewald and Bob Miller in Detroit, Dean Vogelar and his staff, Jeff Coy in Kansas City. Rip foul again, this time on the ground, past Willie Horton in Milwaukee. Our thanks to Tom Skibosh and Mario Zeno, Tom Mee and his staff in Minnesota. Mickey Morabito and his people in Oakland, Bob Porter, Craig Detweiler in Seattle, John Blake in Texas, Howie Starkman right here in Toronto, and of course to our own Director of Media Relations, Joe Safety and Lou D'Amelio and his staff. Help has been invaluable throughout the course of the season, and we do appreciate it. Ball and two strikes. The count to Mattingly. Davis brings the pitch, and Mattingly hits it in the air to right field. It is fairly deep, and ABC you later. A twisting, twirling home run for Don Mattingly. Just made it over the right field wall. Mattingly winds up the season with his 35th home run of the year and 145 runs batted in. Mattingly's fourth hit of the ball game. And isn't it fitting that Mattingly, who has been such a tremendous player, hitter and fielder all season long, should wind up with one of his better days of the year. Four for five, and now his 35th home run. The Yankees lead 8-0, and the batter, Dave Winfield, swings on the first pitch, bounces it to third. Top hop, Gruber handles it and throws him out, one down. Mattingly's homer, the right fielder, Thornton, went back, thought he had a play on the ball. He turned the wrong way to begin with, but the ball just cleared the barrier, and Mattingly has hit his 35th. And now Don Baylor with one out. Baylor is 0 for 3 today. He has walked and scored. Takes a high fastball from the left-hander, Steve Davis. Mattingly hitting his... Final home run of the season off a left-hander. The pitch to Baylor. Fast and low. 2-0. Mike Pagliarillo is on deck. He'll get another at bat. Davis ready to work and does. And Baylor takes a strike. Two balls and one strike to Don. Baylor, 23 home runs, 91 RBIs for the year. And the pitch to the veteran hitter. Fly ball, straightaway center field. Waiting for it. Shepard and into his glove, two down. And Mike Pagliarulo homered in the fifth inning when he batted for Andre Robertson. He lined the center in the seventh. One for two in the ball game. Pags with 19 home runs. The Yankees are leading 8 to nothing. And the pitch from Davis. Fastball load in. delivery. Rip foul to the right side and just made it into the front row of seats past the Yankees dugout. The next game for the Yankees, an exhibition game against the Baltimore Orioles on Saturday, March 8th in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The next regular season game for the New York Yankees will be the 1986 season opener April 8th against Kansas City, 1 o'clock at Yankee Stadium. A ball and a strike to Pagliarulo. And the pitch from Davis bounces about three feet in front of home plate. Two balls and one strike. C. 
Seagulls want to be in on the finish. They're beginning to gather. Huge flock of them coming in off Lake Ontario. Two and one to Pags. A low fastball, and it's three and one. Davis takes a bit of a breather as he rubs up a new baseball. Takes the sign from Jeff Heron. 3-1 pitch to Pags. Bounced foul off the right side. Full count three and two. Alirito had stepped out, requesting time. Now he's back in. And the 3-2 pitch to Pags. Foul back. That's going to be right in front of our booth. If the Yankees win this game, they will wind up the season. 97 wins, 64 losses. Only the Toronto Blue Jays, the St. Louis Cardinals, and the New York Mets will win more games this year. Swing and a miss, strike three. So the Yankees are retired as Davis fans Paul Yerudo. The Yankees score a run on Don Mattingly's 35th home run of the year. And at the end of eight and a half, the score, the Yankees eight, the Blue Jays nothing. If you're looking for a business phone system, you're probably listening to a lot of business phone salesmen. Our newest system is integrated, conjugated, corrugated, subjugated, and silver-plated into a network that's promulgated and printed. We're proud of our online capabilities, our offline capabilities, our terminal, non-terminal, and semi-terminal capabilities, all of which we're totally incapable of installing. Our phase one includes data switching, voice switching, your switching, I'm switching, automatic, PBX, BBC, CBS, ABC. If all that sounds too familiar. You don't need a new phone system. You need a new phone company. Tell Plus Communications. We don't manufacture telecommunication systems. We design them around your needs, not ours. And we'll explain everything in plain, simple English. Tell Plus Communications. Because intelligent communication begins with intelligent people. Phase 2 includes microwave, electrowave, shortwave, thermowave, tidal wave. Call Tell Plus Communications toll-free at 1-800-T-E-L-P-L-U-S. Even with 25,000 customers. We're not too busy to answer the phone. Your Tri-State Chevy dealer's got the big idea on small cars, like the new Sprint that delivers a big 55 miles per gallon, the best in America. Or new Spectrum with a big comfortable interior and great mileage. Or go for the Nova and get big time performance on America's new roomy subcompact. Hey, when it comes to small cars, your Tri-State Chevy dealer's got the big ideas and small base sticker prices to back them up. Now more than ever, your Tri-State Chevrolet dealers got what you're looking for. We go to the bottom half of the ninth inning here at Exhibition Stadium in Toronto, Ontario. And very shortly, an historic moment in baseball, Phil Necro on the hill, three outs away from his 300th win. The Yankees have three pitchers warming up down on the sidelines. Left-hander Dave Ricchetti, right-hander Brian Fisher, and also Mike Armstrong, who did not have a mound to work off, had also been warming up alongside him. They will sit down as Phil Necro is set to pick to Rick Leach. Leach, the left fielder, has struck out, walked, and struck out again. Necro has struck out four men this afternoon and the first pitch knuckleball for a call strike one to the left hand hitting Rick Leach the Yankees lead 8 nothing. knuckleball wide and the count will even 1-1 one and one. in left field Dan Pasqua in center field Henry Cotto in right field Dave Winfield the pitch low and outside on the infield, Mike Pagliarotto at third, Bobby Meacham at shortstop, Willie Randolph at second, Don Mattingly at first, and Butch Weiniger behind the plate. Two and one count on Leach. Negro's pitch, 
Bounce back to the pitcher. Necro has it. The throw to first. One out. Here in the bottom half of the ninth. And Necro is just two outs away. This is Phil's fifth start. The right fielder. In an attempt to win his 300th game. The batter is right fielder Lou Thornton. A left-hand batter. And the pitch to him. High and tight. Ball one. Tony Fernandez has come out on deck to bat for Cecil Fielder. The Yankees lead 8 nothing, and the pitch. Knuckleball is popped up. Down the first baseline. Weininger settles under it. The catcher has it. Two down. Two outs, and Phil Necro is one out away from his 300th win. The fans realize it. The entire Yankee bench is up in front of the dugout in anticipation. Tony Fernandez announced as a pinch hitter for Cecil Fielder. Fernandez, a switch hitter, will bat left-handed. As a left-hand batter this year, Fernandez has been up 369 times with 105 hits, batting 285 left-handed. Fans and players up and waiting. Necro blows on his pitching hand, starts the wind-up, and the pitch. Line to left center field. That's going to be a base hit. It will go to the wall. Cotto chases it down off the wall. Fernandez goes into second base and holds with a stand-up double. And now Jeff Burrows. A runner at second. That is only the fourth hit of the ball game. Off Phil Negro. Weidegger goes out to the mound. Polly Rillo comes in from third base. When Negro gets the last out, another bit of baseball history. He will become the 18th pitcher in the history of the major leagues to have won 300 games. He blows on his pitching hand. Weidegger goes through the sides and sets the target. Fernandez at second, right hand hitting Jeff Burrows. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul off the left side. Strike one. I have watched two other pitchers win their 300th game. Gaylord Perry and Tom Seaver, both on opposing ball clubs. And now Joe Necro is going to the mound. Bill's brother Joe is going to the mound. He talks to Phil and he talks to Weiniger. This will represent an official trip to the mound. Billy Martin sends Joe Necro out to talk to Brother Phil. Great big smile on the face of both men. And now Joe Necro jogs back to the dugout. And Phil Necro will try to record the final out in his 300th win. The Yankees lead 8 to nothing. Phil has the sign and the pitch to Burroughs. It is low, a ball and a strike. Meacham well over in the hole at shortstop. Randolph shaded over toward the bag. The outfield swings to the left side for Burroughs. The pitch, it's in for a strike and the count is one and two. Necro sneaks the fastball over. A ball and two strikes to count to Jeff Burroughs. Big gap on the right side of the infield. Fans standing. The pitch. 
Popped up foul. That'll be back in the seats out of play. Yes, the fans here in Toronto who saw their Blue Jays clinch the American League's Eastern Division title yesterday now are watching a bit of baseball history as most of them are standing as are all the Yankee players in their dugout standing watching Phil Necrol. One ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Necro has done it. Necro has his 300th win. He strikes out Jeff Burrows and Phil Necro becomes only the 18th pitcher in the history of the major leagues to win 300 ball games. He strikes out Jeff Burrows for the final out of the ball game. The entire Yankee bench, all the players, and the bullpen surrounding Phil Necro between the pitcher's mound and the first base line. Phil Necro not only wins his 300th game, in so doing, he pitches a shutout here at Toronto's Exhibition Stadium this afternoon. Phil Necro's seventh shutout this year and the 51st of his career. In doing so, Necro now gets a hug from the two trainers, from uh, Gene Monahan and Mark Laton. Necro on many occasions this year has credited the trainers with keeping him in shape, enabling to him to uh, continue in the starting rotation. He walks off the field with his brother Joe's arm around him. And it just appeared from here that uh, Joe Necro had planted a light brotherly kiss on uh, Phil's right cheek. Now Yankees media relations director Joe Safety will take charge. And a press conference will be established as Necro will meet the media after winning his 300th career ball game. For the Blue Jays in the ninth inning, no runs. One base hit. There were no errors and one man left on base. The strikeout of Burroughs, Necro's fifth strikeout of the ball game. He very effectively scattered four base hits. No more than one hit in any inning. In only the fourth inning did the Blue Jays have two men on base at one time. Necro retired the side in order in the first, gave up a walk, then a double play in the second. Three up, three down in the third. In the fourth inning, a walk and a base hit. Three up, three down in the fifth. A walk followed by a double play in the sixth. A double in the seventh, a single in the eighth, and a double here in the ninth inning. I'll be back with the totals and the recap on the ball game, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll talk more about Phil Necro's 300th win in just a moment. The final score, the New York Yankees 8 and the Toronto Blue Jays nothing. Hey, this is Bob Hope. Texaco's new formula having on Supreme challenges the world's most expensive motor oil. Synthetics and Haviland both exceed car makers' warranties. Both meet or exceed industry standards for wear, cleanliness, and rust protection. But only Haviland comes without the high price. Haviland Supreme 10W30. Now save even more on it, up to $7 through September 30th. Look for special rebate coupons at participating Texaco retailers and stores. Texaco's Haviland Supreme. High quality protection without the high price. Here's to you, buckaroo. For you, of being on the job and working hard all day. So here's to you. You know it isn't only what you say, it's what you do. So this was for you.
Cars, oil, and air filters, like a strong defense in baseball, are crucial to top performance. AC's polyester reinforced oil filters withstand today's higher oil temperatures and pressures. And AC air filters give you oil wetted efficiency and long life. Both are designed to fit nearly all domestic cars and light trucks, and many imports too. For the registered AC Delco retailer in your area, simply call toll free 1 800 AC Delco. Well, we're back here at Exhibition Stadium in Toronto, ladies and gentlemen, where Phil Necro has just become the 18th 300 game winner in the history of the Major Leagues. In just a moment, we'll be hearing from Phil Necro as he is right now the center of media attention. The Yankees winning the ball game from the Toronto Blue Jays, 8 to nothing. The New York Yankees, 8 runs, 7 hits, and no errors. The Blue Jays, no runs, 4 hits, no errors. John Gordon, my colleague, is down on the field, and we're ready to go down to John Gordon. John, you there? Yes, sir, Frank. I'm uh, waiting at this moment for Phil Necro, and I'm sure he'll be coming around the corner. I can't see him from where I am right now in the corner of the dugout, but he is being escorted uh, our way, so we'll have an opportunity to talk to him. All right, Phil Necro is coming to us right now. Joe Safety, the Director of Media Relations. Nuxie, congratulations to you. I, I know, <laughs> I don't know how you feel, but why don't you express your feelings right now? Well, probably the nice thing is about the whole day is that uh, Joe told me right after the game that he took my dad up in intensive care. So uh, that's the best thing I've had all day. I had an opportunity to talk to your mother just moments ago. She uh, informed me that he was taken out of intensive care last night. She did not know anything about the game. They were listening to the Atlanta game as the only game they could get, and they were getting updates, but she didn't know the score. And when I told her that Nuxie was pitching a shutout, she says, oh, I hope he gets it, because if he does, he'll be the oldest pitcher in the history of baseball to get a shutout. Well, I'll tell you, believe it or not, uh, I got with Butch before the ball game, and I threw three knuckleballs the whole ball game. And that was when Jeff came up. I told Butch that I wanted to go without the knuckleball, see if I could win the ball game. But I did tell Butch in the eighth inning that uh, if I got down to two outs and, and if I got ahead of the batter, I wanted to strike him out with the knuckleball. So I threw a fastball and threw two knuckleballs, and the last one was the Negro knuckleball that Jeff missed by a foot, maybe or two. And I just couldn't think of a better way to, to throw the last pitch of a turn of the game, throwing a knuckleball. All right. The floater that you used early in the game, you used it uh, three times in the early innings. Uh, that was a slip pitch. I threw some slow curveballs. I wanted them to get them set up for something other than knuckleball. And everybody, everybody kept running by the mind and says, where's the knuckleball? Where's the knuckleball? And, uh, the fastball wasn't overpowering, but it had good movement on it. I threw some screwballs, some slow curveballs. Uh, and I didn't throw a knuckleball to the, to the last batter. Joe's visit in the ninth inning. Well, you want to know if I want to pitch to that guy or pitch to Jeff Burroughs. And <laughs> Jeff's going like this, you know. And I said, I want Jeff because uh, we were good friends. We played together in Atlanta. And uh, even though he got a hit the first inning, uh, with the wind here, especially, I thought that maybe, I don't know if they'd send a left hander up here and then win the right field, so I was going to take my chance that if he was going to hit the ball out, he'd have to go through the wind on left field line. 21 years from today, will you remember win number 300 oh, yeah. as you might be remembering win number one that you had uh, 21 seasons ago? Probably. I'll probably surely remember 300. I'm, I'm sure I will. Most of all, being that uh, it was the day that I got that out of intensive care, and uh, he taught me to knock the ball and I struck the guy with one, so I couldn't think of a better way to do it. Okay, congratulations to you. Thanks so much for joining us and to you and to your family and to everyone else. Is Nancy here today? No, it's the uh, only bad thing about the whole day. She followed me all over the place and people from Atlanta and in my hometown, Lansing, Ohio, came up and uh, kids in the school and they just, just couldn't do it this time. Okay, the frustration moments of not being able to win four times, it all made it worth it today by winning a 300, did it not? Well, I guess shutting them out, I guess you could say so. But if I would have won a couple of those other ones, we could have been on a pennant drive. But, you know, it didn't work out that way. I would change this one for two or three other wins and uh, keep us in the pennant race. What will you say to your dad when you talk to him today? I'm just giving him, give him my ball and give him the hat. <laughs> and uh, tell him it's for him. You know, he has as much to do with these tournaments as I did. Okay, you got to meet with a lot of other people. Thanks for joining us. And again, congratulations. Thank you, John. Okay, oh, Phil Necro, our guest here. On the dugout show, a very emotional feeling from him uh, saying that nothing more means uh, anything more to him than the fact that he learned during the game, Brother Joe told him that his dad 
is out of intensive care and is resting comfortably now in immediate care in a Wheeling, West Virginia hospital. Back upstairs to you, Frank. Okay, John Gordon, the Yankees win the ball game 8 nothing. Phil Necro becomes the 18th. 300 game winner in the history of the major leagues and promotional considerations for today's game have been provided by Peters Bag Corporation. America's leading manufacturer of soft-sided luggage presents collections of luggage, tote bags, and garment bags for all travel needs featuring the Sasan, Spalding, Trailblazer, and Balenciaga brands. For style, fashion, and quality, ask for Peters Bag products at most fine stores. New York Yankees baseball has been sponsored by People Express Airlines, the smart way to fly. Vic, Telcom Plus International. New York Yankees baseball has been sponsored by People Express Airlines, the smart way to fly. Vic, Telcom Plus International. Sears Automotive Centers. Warren Schley. And by Pineapple Valley Franks. Golf. Sundry Insurance, Toro, AC Delco, and by your local members of the New York State Association of Life Underwriters. When you need an expert, go to a professional. Eastman Kodak, Frito Lay, Yuhu, and by 9X Yellow Pages. It's always there when you need it. Realty World, Monroe, Okie Data, British Caledonian Airways. And by the New York Yankees. New York Yankees baseball is a production of Adler Communications Incorporated. The engineer for Yankees broadcast is Bob Horvath. Bob, thanks for all the fine work this year. Our producer is Brian Ferguson. Without Brian, we would have had the commercials all mixed up. We wouldn't have had the lineups. We wouldn't have known who was on the playing field. Brian, thank you for all your hard work, keeping up the scores, everything else. The operations manager is Carolee Ashwell Bross. The broadcast director is Kathy Koleski. And the executive producer is Arthur Adler. I'm Frank Messer for the entire crew, John Gordon, Bill Rosito, and Bill White. Our next broadcast will be Tuesday afternoon, April 8, 1986, at 1 o'clock from Yankee Stadium against the Kansas City Royals. And I'll stay tuned, please, for the New York Yankees wrap-up, dugout, and scoreboard shows. Make today count with New York's numbers. Bow, 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 bow. Play New York's lottery and make today count for you. The New York Yankees wrap-up show is sponsored by the Lincoln Savings Bank. You'll get better thinking at Lincoln. And by Amco Transmissions. With Amco, why go anywhere else? Good afternoon. Once again, everybody, I'm Frank Messer with John Gordon at Exhibition Stadium in Toronto as we wrap up an 8 to nothing New York Yankees win over the Toronto Blue Jays. The 300th career win for... Phil Necro and the Yankees' 97th win of 1985. We'll be chatting with John Gordon on the dugout portion of our show a little bit later on. Right now, though, let's go to the highlights of this afternoon's ball game. The Yankees got three runs for Phil Necro in the first inning. John Cerruti, a young left-hander on the hill for the Toronto Blue Jays, retired Ricky Henderson on a fly ball. Don Mattingly then singled the first of four hits in the ball game for Mattingly. Uh, Winfield bounced back to the pitcher. Don Baylor drew a walk. Andre Robertson reached on an error. 
which loaded the bases. Willie Randolph hit with a pitch, forcing in a run, leaving the bases loaded, and now the batter is Henry Cotto. Here's a bounding ball and a base hit to left. They're going to wave Henderson, or uh, Robertson home. He's going to try to score. There'll be a play on him, and he's safe. And two runs score on a Henry Cotto single, and the Yanks jump out three to nothing here in the top half of the first inning. And now let's go to the fifth inning with Jim Acker now pitching for Dorado. A leadoff single by Don Mattingly. Winfield struck out. Baylor flied to left. And Mike Pagliarillo batted for Andre Robertson. Here's a shot to deep right field. Well, how about that? The home run drought is over. Catch them all, Mike Pagliarillo. Oh, he drilled that one well beyond the fence in right field. And the Yankees up the lead to five to nothing. That was Pagliarillo's 19th home run of the season. Now the eighth inning. Bill Cottle is pitching now for the Blue Jays. He walks Willie Randolph, and Willie gets on base for the fourth time in the ball game. And the batter will be Henry Cotto. Cotto swings, and he hits a fly to left. This one is well hit. Leach is chasing. It is out of here. Touch them all, Henry Cotto. Home run number one on the year. Boy, I tell you, with that wind blowing out to right field, it takes a powerful blast to get one out of this ballpark. And Henry Cotto has just pulled one to left field over the fence for his first home run of the 1985 season. And the first home run of his major league career. Henry Cotto, a happy man. Now let's go to the ninth inning with Steve Davis, a left-hander pitching for the Toronto Blue Jays. The leadoff batter is Don Mattingly. Don Mattingly hits it in the air to right field. It is fairly deep and A, B, C, you later. A twisting, twirling home run for Don Mattingly. Just made it over the right field wall. Mattingly winds up the season with his 35th home run of the year and 145 runs batted in. Yes, a home run for Mattingly. That was Don's fourth hit of the ball game. And now the tension building. Bottom half of the ninth inning, Phil Necro retires Rick Leach on a comebacker to the mound. Lou Thornton pops up foul to catcher Butch Weininger. Tony Fernandez bats for Cecil Fielder and doubles to left center field. Two outs. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Necro has done it. Necro has his 300th win. He strikes out Jeff Bowes and Phil Necro becomes only the 18th pitcher in the history of the major leagues to win 300 ball games. Yes, Phil Necro becomes a 300 game winner. The 1985 season produced two 300 game winners, Tom Seaver of the Chicago White Sox, and on this, the last day of the season, Phil Necro of the New York Yankees. We'll be back with more The Dugout Show and more wrap up, but first, please, these messages. Charlie. No, ma'am, but don't worry. I'll be careful. I did. When you watch your most precious possessions roll away, you've got to trust they'll be safe. That's why many school bus companies all over trust their transmissions to Amco Transmissions. Hey, look at that big pile of things. Because Amco does more than just fix your transmission. Their specially trained mechanics rebuild it to perform like new. All out. We even made it on time. School bus companies can't take unnecessary risks. Should you? For transmission service, go where you know it's better than fixed. It's AMCO. Double A. MCO. There are now 70 AMCO transmission dealers in the New York area. See your telephone directory for the dealer nearest you. AMCO. Why go anywhere else? And if you're shopping for a new car, now is the perfect time to come to Lincoln. 
Lincoln has dropped its annual percentage rate on 36-month new car auto loans to a low 11.75%. That's 11.75%. So take advantage of Lincoln's new low auto loan rate and act today. Call toll-free 1-800-458-9999. That's 1-800-458-9999. The Lincoln Savings Bank, FSB... Member FDIC, Equal Opportunity Lender. At this stage of our broadcast, uh, we would have the New York Yankees dugout show sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. But since we have had John Gordon down on the field with Phil Necro earlier in the broadcast, we will not be going to the dugout right now. We'll talk about the ball game a little bit more. Phil Necro in his fifth shot at winning career game number 300 did win it and became the 18th pitcher in the history of the major leagues to reach that coveted plateau. In going for his uh, 300, Phil lost three of his last four starts, but this afternoon he not only won his 300th game, he became the oldest pitcher in the history of the major leagues to pitch a shutout. At the age of 46, he pitched a four-hit shutout against the Toronto Blue Jays. He walked three. He struck out four men in the ball game. Necro winds up the season with a record of 16 wins and 12 losses. And for his career, 300 wins and 250 losses on his career. Necro also took over seventh place on the all-time uh, strikeout list. He uh, struck out his way, I said uh, four, he struck out five men in the ball game for a total in his career of 3,197 strikeouts. It was his seventh complete game pitched this 1985 season and his first shutout of this year, the 51st shutout of his entire career. And Getty would like to congratulate the New York Yankees' Getty star of the game, winning pitcher Phil Necro for winning his 300th and performing miles ahead of himself in today's ball game. We're pleased to present Phil Necro with Getty gift certificates. At Getty, the proof is at the pump. And the New York Yankees' dugout show throughout the season has been sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. We'll be back with more after this message. This Bud's for you For being on the ball and catching every play So here's to you For all you fans who like your beer and baseball too Here's a lesson on how to execute the perfect play. First, step up to the box. <laughs> the ice box, that is. Then get a good grip. On a Budweiser, of course. And simply follow through. Now that's perfect. That's Budweiser. Exclusive beechwood aging and great taste make the king of beers a good play every time. But remember, practice makes perfect. It's best for you. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. And now let's take a 10-second Lon Jean's watch timeout on the New York Yankee Radio Network. Have you seen the exciting gold medal from Lon Jean's, the world's most honored watch? See it at F. Freeman and Sons in Rutland, Vermont. From speedster Ricky Henderson to the Yankees' race for the American League pennant, we've got your bases covered on B Station for Sports. This year, every time a Yankee hits a home run, Realty World will donate $50 to United Cerebral Palsy. With today's homers by Mike Pagliarulo, Henry Cotto, and Don Mattingly, another $150 has been given to this worthwhile cause. The total contributions for the season, $8,800 by our friends at Realty World. Frito Lay is contributing to the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Research Fund. In the name of the New York Yankees, $50 for each run the Yankees score this year. With the eight runs the Yankees scored this afternoon, $400 will be contributed to the fund. 
the grand total contributed to this date an even $189,000 for the 1985 season, $41,950. The Yankees win the ball game, 8 to nothing. Phil Necro goes all the way to win his 16th of the season, the 300th of his career. John Cerruti, the starter and loser for the Blue Jays, his record 0-2, game-winning RBI, Willie Randolph, his sixth of the season. The New York Yankees wrap-up show has been sponsored by Amco Transmissions. With Amco, why go anywhere else? And by the Lincoln Savings Bank, you'll get better thinking at Lincoln. The New York Yankees scoreboard show is sponsored by Getty. At Getty, the proof is at the pump. Well, the Yankees win their final game of the 1985 season here at Toronto, 8 to nothing. Elsewhere, Oakland playing at Kansas City. Oakland leading by a score of 5 to 3 at the end of 6. Chris Cotteroli started for Oakland, Mike Jones for Kansas City. California, Texas, they're tied 3 to 3 at the end of 5 and a half innings of play. Mike Witt opposing Jeb Russell. Detroit and Baltimore playing for third at place. And the game being played in Baltimore, the Tigers are leading 11-3 at the end of six and a half. Behind Frank Tanetta, Dennis Martinez started for Baltimore. Home runs in the game, Chet Lemon has hit a pair for the Tigers, his 17th and 18th. Floyd Rayford, number 18, and Cal Ripken, number 26, for Baltimore. Milwaukee at Boston. The Brewers, seven. The Boston Red Sox, five at the end of seven. Billy Joe Robideau has hit a pair of home runs, his second and third in the major leagues for the Milwaukee Brewers. And the Chicago White Sox lead the Seattle Mariners, three to two at the end of seven. <clears throat> Ron Kittle has hit his 26th home run of the year. Mike Moore pitching for Seattle. Ed Correa started for Chicago. Joel Davis in the sixth. Cleveland at Minnesota in the bottom half of the eighth inning. The Indians four, or rather the Minnesota Twins four, the Cleveland Indians two. I'll be back to update the National League, but first please, this from Getty. If a restaurant charged you extra just because you paid with a credit card, you'd probably never go there again. But that's what some gasoline stations are trying to get away with. When they say cash customers pay less, they're really saying credit card customers pay more. That's some way to do business. A gasoline company gives you a credit card, then they give their cash customers a better price. Getty doesn't play those games. We realize that the last thing you need is another credit card to carry around. Your Visa and MasterCard are perfectly all right with us. And we don't charge you a penny more to use them. Visa, MasterCard, or plain old cash, it's the same low price. So don't be fooled by so-called cash discounts. Bring your card to Getty and get the credit you deserve. At Getty, the proof is at the pump. And the next time you're at the Getty pump, fill up with Getty Premium Unleaded. It's high octane, helps give you quick starts and a smooth, quiet engine. Try it, because you might have a better running engine than you think you have. At Getty, the proof is at the pump. At Shea Stadium, the Montreal Expos nip the New York Mets 2-1. to one. Dan Schatzeter, the winning pitcher, and Bill Latham, the loser in the ball game. The New York Mets wind up the season with a record of 98 wins and 64 losses. The New York Yankees wind up the season with a record of 97 wins and 64 losses. The Yankees uh, not making up, of course, the rained-out game against the Detroit Tigers. Elsewhere in the National League, the Philadelphia Phillies blanked the Pittsburgh Pirates 5-0. Kevin Gross won his 15th game on a four-hit shutout. He's 15-13. and 13. Rick Roden, the loser, winds up 10-15. and 15. John Russell hit uh, three-run homer, his ninth home run of the year. The Cubs and Cardinals are in the bottom half of the eighth inning at St. Louis with the Chicago Cubs leading 8-2. Davey Lopes has hit his 11th home run of the year. Reggie Patterson has gone all the way for the Cubs. Joaquin Andujar started for the Cardinals, and he will not win his 22nd. The Atlanta Braves lead the San Francisco Giants 6-0 after four behind Steve Bedrosian. Colin Ward started for the Giants. 
The uh, Cincinnati Reds and Los Angeles Dodgers have completed one scoreless inning at Dodger Stadium. Tom Browning going for his 21st win, the rookie for Cincinnati. Dennis Powell is pitching for the Dodgers. And the Houston Astros scored two on the top half of the first. The San Diego Padres are now batting. Mike Scott pitching for Houston. Eric Schau for San Diego. And here at Toronto's Exhibition Stadium this afternoon, Phil Negro pitched a four-hit shutout as the New York Yankees down the Toronto Blue Jays by a score of 8 to nothing. Negro's 300th career win and his 16th win this season. He winds up the year 16 and 12. The Yankees eight runs, seven hits, no errors, six men left. And the Blue Jays, no runs, four hits, no errors, with five men left on base. Negro walked three, he struck out five in winning his 300th. Home runs in the ball game for the New York Yankees. Don Mattingly is 35th as Mattingly had four hits today. Mike Pagliarulo hit his 19th, and Henry Cotto hit his first in the Major Leagues. The Yankees win it 8 to nothing. The New York Yankees scoreboard show has been sponsored by Getty. At Getty, the proof is at the pump. For John Gordon, I'm Frank Messer. Hey, be see you later. Thank you. On the flagship station for the New York Yankees. <laughs>